Saturday's slate is not just this game, though. There's certainly the marquee game. How about game coming up at noon? Notre Dame and North Carolina State. Sam Hartman's had some issues with the pack. He has. He's struggled against his defense, but right, man, right now, this guy right now is playing as well as anybody. He's had a couple games under his belt with his new teammates. Seems to be in a great rhythm, but let's face it. This game's going to be different. On the road in Raleigh, he needs his run game because Dave Dorn knows how to dial it up. Tony Gibson, they know how to create pressure. Got one of the best linebackers in the country, Peyton Wilson. They are going to crank up some exotic looks and see how Sam Hartman and the Irish handle it. I referenced the game a few years ago between North Carolina State and Notre Dame in this same stadium. And once again, thunderstorms. They're in a lightning delay that will likely push back kickoff. But we still got a little time. We'll see how that all goes and keep an eye on the weather. It won't be monsoon conditions, I don't think, like it was back then. We'll see. DoorDash counting us down to kickoff on ABC, Notre Dame, and North Carolina State. There was just another lightning strike in Raleigh. So they're holding off on the warm-ups at the moment. They'll have to make sure that lightning's cleared out of the area. We'll try to reach Sam Hartman when we get that opportunity. What a morning we have as we are AT&T 5G connected with... Raleigh, North Carolina. How are we looking down there? Counting down to kick off Notre Dame and North Carolina State. And Sam Hartman, kind enough to join us, says the storms have subsided, apparently. Sam, how does the weather look down there first? Uh, it feels a little bit like home, you know, back in my uh, home state, so it's pretty cool. But I think we just got the all clear, so trying to bang out some warm ups while we're down here, but um, it's feeling good. Yeah, absolutely. You look amazing right now. Let's get those shoulders loosened up. You know, let's make sure <laughs> we can keep doing this thing. Sam, uh, I just want to ask you, I assume... I, I, I appreciate that. Hey, no problem. You look great. The beard is phenomenal. The hair is flowing. I mean, this is a magical era of Sam Hartman. I assume there was a lot of schools, though, that were looking for your services. Why did you choose Notre Dame, Sam? And how has it been so perfect, seemingly, from jump? Um, I mean, I think it starts with the locker room here. I think uh, I kind of got lucky in that aspect. It wasn't something I knew right away, but um, from everything that I heard from, you know, other coaches, players, former players, um, they just said the locker room is going to make this team. And it's going to make you feel at home as soon as I stepped in in spring. And then, I mean, the coaching staff embracing me, Coach Freeman to start, you know, what he's built in these last two years has been incredible. And again, we're just hoping to keep capitalizing on it as much as we can. Hey, Sam, Desmond Howard here. You seem to be the perfect fit for Notre Dame, but I wanted to concentrate on your offensive line, especially guys like Joe Ault. Tell me about the personality and the dominance of your offensive line. I mean, yeah, you said it. Joe Ault's kind of that, uh, the head honcho for us. I um, mean, he looks like he's 15, but plays like he's a 40-year-old like uh, grown man out here. So it's, um, it's a special group we have. You know, Blake on the other side is just another. Again, if Joe's probably not here, we're all talking about Blake like he's one of the top draft picks in the country. So, um, And then obviously the center, um, Zeke Carell, a guy I bonded with right away. You've got to have that great connection as a quarterback and a center. And then the, the guards really stepped up. We didn't know coming to this year who was going to be our guards. But, again, it starts up front. It's going to be a physical game this uh, this afternoon, and we're ready to ready to bring it to him. Hey, Sam, it, it's Kirk. Just just curious, for, maybe for your fans watching this game, what you've seen on tape this week, getting ready for Dave Dorn and Tony Gibson's scheme. I know you're familiar with with NC State and what they can do. Just your thoughts on the challenges they present today. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously they run a they run a different scheme. They run a different defense than you see week to week. Um, but it really starts in the linebacker core. A guy, Peyton Wilson, got a lot of respect for him. Um, incredible player. I've been playing against him since, you know, my freshman year. And, um, and then the secondary is, you know, no, there's, there's no, um, I got told I have less than 10 minutes by our strength cap. Um, there's no uh, real drop off in the secondary, too. They lost a lot of guys. We know that they got guys um, that are going to be able to play. And they're physical. They're physical from snap one to the very last snap. And um, we're hoping to match that physicality. Sam, while we were waiting for the weather to clear, Jen Latta brought us a great piece about your necklace and the rib. Are you wearing that right now? Do you have the rib necklace with you? I, 
I am not, sadly. I, uh, it's a little sharp, so I don't want to stab myself with it. Uh, I might try and re-enter into the, the rib cavity that's missing, but uh, no, it is, it is safe and sound. It's safe and sound in a, in a, a lunchbox-looking thing that says Sam's Rib, do not eat. Um, and so we're, we're, it's, all, it's all put away for now. Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, Sam, you're the best, man. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I'm going to confess, it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to Sam Harbin, Notre Dame. No doubt. Yeah. Been, because yeah, he no. was synonymous with Wake Forest, but boy, what a great start he's off to with the Irish. Can't wait to watch you play today, Sam. Thanks for being with us. Not a baby, Sam. Lost all three trips. Mm. Trying to change that against Cal. Different era out there. Hey, there's North Carolina State. We're talking Sam Hartman, talking yep. Notre Dame. Yep. Dave Doran building a little something there. See we go. And there is Brennan Armstrong, three-year captain at Virginia. Speaking of having to get used to guys being at different places. Do you like his chance? I do. Today? I, I, I do. I think, again, he, I, I, I'm, I was interested to see him leave Virginia with all that experience to join Robert and I, the offensive coordinator. Also going to be a big day down in Raleigh at Carter Finley Stadium, where they are getting ready to host a top 10 Notre Dame team. Going to be an interesting one and a familiar foe and quarterback. It's Sam Hartman, a huge game for both of these teams. Throwing into the end zone, touchdown. What a read by Sam Hartman. You have a potential NFL quarterback going against a championship level defense. Their biggest improvement from last year is just their quarterback. I think he really elevates their team. The ability to come from a different program to a place like Notre Dame. We all know how talented he is. They're a really good defense. A lot of changes, they move pre-snap and they have a lot of veteran guys who play physical. We have had some good games against him. He's probably excited about some redemption. You gotta really put the house on him. Speed his process up to where he can't just sit back. You gotta get him frustrated and hopefully get him to force a couple throws to us. We have to fight fire with fire. Attacking offense versus extremely attacking defense. Coach Doran said to get him frustrated and hopefully force him into some bad throws. They've had success against Sam Hartman, who has struggled. He has never won in Raleigh. He's one and two against NC State. So, EJ, what are your expectations on what we'll see from this NC State team as they welcome in, in uh, Sam Hartman in a new uniform? Well, Notre Dame will probably run the ball a lot early on in this game, not because of the stats and the history he's had against NC State, because that's what they do. They got a great offensive line. They got estimated running back. They got guys that can go up the field and really first see if NC State can stop the run. I think that's the key. Can their front four, even their front seven on defense, stop the run? And then as the game goes forward, if it's going back and forth, they can also spread you out, and they can hit some receivers down the field vertically. So it's kind of pick your poison with this offense from Notre Dame, but specifically to clean day, potentially for Sam Hartman if the defense can get after and it's going to be fascinating with it's pouring down rain there you know how much does that change your game mm -hmm. plan you know are you calling those shots are you having to be ground and pound which Notre Dame very comfortable with but NC State how do you attack that you know with the three-man front that they have the four run linebackers running around are they going to be exotic are they going to bring pressure but those big guys up front I, I think they can do the job it's a very talented offensive line coach Joe Alt one of the best in the country at left right. tackle they're going to look to make an impact today how can you create chaos amongst that well, line of I scrimmage think, I think weather's huge when, when it's when the weather's bad the big, more physical teams have a better shot at winning, and the team that can run the ball the best. And that's what you guys have been saying. So it's going to be tough to throw and catch in the rain. Wind is worse, but rain is tough to deal with. Yeah, I, I agree. It favors Notre Dame because of that big offensive line and how physical they are. But uh, NC State's got to find some type of offense outside of Brennan Armstrong, right? right? It's whether it's a running and back running stepping up. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to be able to run. But I mean, just even a little screen pass or right. something to get it to the edge to be able to test out this Notre Dame defense because I'm not worried about the guys on the outside at all from Notre Dame. I'm stacking a box and I'm stopping a run. Yeah. It's a big opportunity for NC State, Brennan Armstrong on this stage and the conference. You guys said it earlier, Notre Dame 28-0 and against the ACC right now. We'll see if NC State is able to snap that streak. How about NC State and Notre Dame? This is a big mm. one for a lot of reasons. What do you think? It, it, it hurts my pride to say it. Oh, man. But I I got to go with Notre Dame. It's about my record, right? I'm worried about my record. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go with Notre Dame. I love UNC State, but Notre Dame, that offensive line is too big and too good. Yeah, I'm, I'm going Notre Dame here, too. I think weather's going to play a big factor as we just were discussing that. I think Notre Dame's going to run the football a ton. But that ball bounces weird when the weather's like that. Maybe NC State picks it up, but I'm going Golden Domers. And maybe the rain could be the you know the equalizer, the equalizer yeah. between the two teams as far as what Notre Dame does well and NC State does well. I like Notre Dame. I, I, excuse me, I like NC State at home. Uh, I know their crowd may not be huge because it's a day game, but I like NC State overall. 
Uh, I know the ACC is due. It's only been, what, 28 games in a row. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to happen today. Oh. It's going to be 29-0 against, uh, or at least 29 in a row for Notre Dame versus ACC. Notre Dame is 1-13 on the road as a top 25 team, you guys, um, when they're paying unranked opponents. I'm going to say they get one more win and try yeah. to get that. I've got Notre Dame as well, so I think that they're going to take care of business on the road at Carter-Finley Stadium. But good job, EJ, because I was getting a little worried that it was going to be the bottom line all yeah. looking the same. So glad that you went that way. North Carolina State and Notre Dame dealt with some weather this morning. The Wolfpack 2-1 and one all time against the Fighting Irish and also two and one against teams led by a starting quarterback called Sam Hartman. He's been sacked 13 times and thrown six interceptions against the Wolfpack. And to give that context, that's twice the rate against all other ACC opponents in his career while at Wake Forest. Will this be a change with the Irish in the pack today? Throwing into the end zone, touchdown. What a read by Sam Hartman. You have a potential NFL quarterback going against a championship level defense. Their biggest improvement from last year is just their quarterback. I think he really elevates their team. The ability to come from a different program to a place like Notre Dame. We all know how talented he is. They're a really good defense. A lot of changes, they move pre-snap, and they have a lot of veteran guys who play physical. We have had some good games against him. He's probably excited about some redemption. You've got to really put the house on him. Speed his process up to where he can't just sit back. Try to get him frustrated and hopefully get him to force a couple throws to us. We have to fight fire with fire. Attacking offense versus extremely attacking defense. And here's some graphic representation of what I talked about when Sam was at Wake Forest. Completion percentage just over 50% and a negative touchdown to interception ratio in the last two meetings against Wolfpack. One of those he actually won, though. Yeah, well, the thing about Sam Hartman that I love about him is his moxie, his swagger, and his accuracy in field for the game is at a level that not a lot of college quarterbacks are ever able to get to. The amount of football he played at Wake Forest successfully has set him up to walk into a locker room here in Notre Dame and have success quickly. And I'm not just saying like, oh, stumble out of the gates. Against Navy, he was putting it on guys 40, 50 yards down the field. And when you have a veteran quarterback, he can see this man covered. Where am I going through my reads? Who cares? Let me throw to a spot, cut, yeah. keep it moving. Sam Hartman has his veteran moxie swagger, but he has a talent that not a lot of people we even play on Sundays have. That's he can feel the game, see the game, and put it on a dot. Sam Hartman's moxie is why they're going to be a different team this year, but also the way he can throw the rock kind of answers the question on whether or not Notre Dame needs the weapons that other schools have because he can throw guys open. Right. So I think it's a perfect marriage. I think what Sam does well is what Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame needed, yeah. and it's a massive boost up there. i tell you what, I think Notre Dame, so far this season, they're playing winning football. Only one turnover, just a handful of penalties. That's winning football, and they have a running back. Audric Estime, who I think is a special player, too. I, I love what Sam brings to this offense, but to me, it all starts with the offensive line. He struggled against North Carolina and the North Carolina State in the past. I don't think he's going to have those struggles today. I think they're going to dominate the offensive line and they're going to protect him. He's going to be very comfortable. Yeah, he'll, he'll try to find opportunities one on one, uh, like you just saw with Pat's tape, with Jaden Thomas and others. I, I think the thing that's crazy is he's learning a t totally different scheme with a new group of receivers that he's throwing the way you described, Pat. I mean, he's throwing, he, he's got great chemistry with guys. Now, Peyton Wilson, one of the top linebackers, more experienced linebackers, not in the ACC, but maybe in the entire country. Aiden White, another guy that can fly around. This, this is a defense that always gives. A, a quarterback a challenge because of their unusual, unorthodox scheme. They play that 3-3-5. They move a lot of people around. They really go from pre-snap to post-snap. I'm just, I don't know if they're going to win the game, but I guarantee you that Dave Doran and that defense will keep them close. Tony Gibson, defense coordinator mm -hmm. for NC State yeah. there, knows that the run game is that kind of weakest part. Notre Dame's got a great run game, yeah. and that could be the thing that determines this whole thing. It is, exactly. All right, that one's coming up uh, about five minutes or so. Hat still on. Which hat are you wearing for Notre Dame and North Carolina State? Top We've of the been hour. talking about Sam Hartman pretty much the whole show and what he's brought to Notre Dame. I like the way they're playing. They're playing a winning brand of football. Hopefully they can continue that today. Close game, but I'm going fighting Irish. I love Coach Dorn and his culture down there at NC State, the Wolfpack, and Buds. they do their thing. Yeah. Yep. 
I'm going the other way. Go to Sam <laughs> and Notre Dame. I love, I love them. I love Sam Hartman. You know, I, I saw this game uh, developing in my, my head. Notre Dame's good. They, they, they've won two games. And initially, before the season, I figured NC State scheduled Notre Dame so they can get a sellout at home. Smart. You know, that's the thing. But Notre Dame is a quality team, and I think they're going to beat the Wolfpack. Notre Dame, I want to read this. Sam Hartman has led 12 drives in the first two games. 11 for touchdowns. Wow. <laughs> 11 out of wow. 12 drives for touchdowns. The Irish cover. It's pretty good. Yeah, they are good. And uh, I, first of all, I know Marcus Freeman. He's a good man. Uh -oh. I have a friend of his. <laughs> I wish him well. I love Sammy Hartman. I love the whole thing. Uh, but I'm picking NC State because Whoa. of defense Ooh. today. Mm. Peyton Wilson, one of the best linebackers in the country. Dave Dorn is a very, very underrated coach. Um, I'm going North Carolina. I'm going Wolfpack. That's coming up in just a few minutes. It was a dark and dreary morning here in Raleigh with thunderstorms and plenty of rain. But that hasn't dampened the spirits of NC State fans. They are here. The tailgating went on as planned, and Wolfpack Nation is fired up. Their quarterback is Brendan Armstrong in his first year at NC State after five at Virginia. His opposite number is another 60-year quarterback in a new place. Sam Hartman's in his first year at Notre Dame and back in his native North Carolina where he spent five years as a record-setting quarterback at Wake Forest. Welcome to ESPN's afternoon college football on ABC presented by Gillette Labs. Something has to give here in Raleigh today as the sun is trying to break free from the clouds. Notre Dame's won 28 straight regular season games against ACC opponents. NC State has won 23 in a row here at home against non-conference foes. Hi, everybody. Sean McDonough along with Greg McElroy in our second week together, already dressing alike. Delighted to have you with us for what should be a very entertaining game. Notre Dame's off to a great start, 2-0. They've outscored their opponents 98-6, but that was against Navy and Tennessee State. A big challenge today against a very good Wolfpack team. And a team that won nine games last year. It was a solid first year for Marcus Freeman. They go into the offseason, and they find gold in the portal by upgrading significantly at the quarterback position. Sam Hartman's a veteran. 24 years old, came to South Bend, won the team over immediately. And statistically speaking, he's amongst the all-time greats in college football history. And so far through two weeks, albeit against lesser competition, he showcased a level of comfort that feels way ahead of schedule in an offensive system that's completely different. But against an NC State defense, he's familiar with these guys. He's struggled in the three outings in the past. Yeah, one and two in his career while at Wake Forest against NC State. Meanwhile, here in Raleigh, they are excited about the new season. They won eight games last year, despite the fact they used four different starting quarterbacks. So now they think Brennan Armstrong is the guy who can help the offense keep up with the always solid defense. And it's really a tale of two seasons for Brennan Armstrong. Two years ago, off the charts good. Last year, not very good at all. That's his own words. He's now reunited with his offensive coordinator, Robert Anai, and his legs have been the difference up to this point, but he's really got to get the passing game going against an excellent Notre Dame defense. Wolfpack ready to take the field. Before a sellout crowd here at Carter Finley Stadium. North Carolina State opened on the road in East Hartford, Connecticut with a win over the Yukon Huskies nine days ago, 24 to 14. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This is the ACC on ESPN. Carter Finley Stadium where we could have more bad weather a little bit later this afternoon. We're hoping that holds off until after this game is finished. Sam Hartman and Notre Dame taking on the NC State Wolfpack. North Carolina State won the toss and elected to defer so Notre Dame took the ball and Colin Smith will kick off. Jabron Payne among those back deep for the Fighting Irish. The juice squad on the sideline as Dave Doran calls them. 
backup players walk ons part of their responsibility be actively involved in the game help get the crowd fired up don't think this crowd needs much for the fourth meeting all time between these two teams good kick about eight yards deep and a touchback so here comes Notre Dame but first, let's check in on the sideline with Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, you mentioned the weather. Luckily, uh, lightning and thunder has moved out of the area. The closest lightning strikes are about 30 miles away. And in the pregame meeting between the officials and stadium operations, they said because these storm cells are moving so quickly, they may clear the stadium if lightning strikes within 10 miles or so to ensure everyone's safety. But isolated showers picking up south of here expected to hit this area within the next hour or so. Sean. Well, we could have some interruptions today. Sam Hartman at quarterback his 48th career start is third for Notre Dame he hands it off to Roderick Estime their leading rusher taken down by Savion Jackson Sam Hartman makes the position really look easy he's looked so under control these first couple games in a fighting Irish uniform very accurate passer but don't sleep on his mobility. His legs have been the answer at times when the offensive line has given up some issues in protection. So very athletic, very, very dialed in. Six touchdown passes and only seven incompletions against Navy and Tennessee State. Estime again taken down by Sean Brown, starting at safety for the first time in his career. Ordinarily a prominent special teams player, but their starter, Jakeen Harris, a veteran, is out with an injury, so Brown is in and has already made a big play. Already seeing pressure from Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator for NC State. They'll bring it from all over the place. Very aggressive, especially when Notre Dame is off schedule. Need to continue to be prepared. With some of the blitzes and the pressures, it looks like one might be coming off the left-hand side right here. He feels they have rattled Hartman in the past when he was the quarterback. They do bring that pressure, and the ball comes out. Recovered by Notre Dame, back inside the 15-yard line. Davin Van knocked it out. Pat Coogan recovered a loss of 11. And pressure right up the middle. Safety pressure with the inside linebacker. And they just completely collapsed the pocket. The right side gives up a lot of leakage as well. Mentioned already, this offensive line has been the strength of the team. They're the tone setter, but they have not seen a front that is this relentless. Bryce McPherson on the punt. Jalen Coit back to receive it. It's a low line drive kick. Caught on a bounce by Coit with a lot of room. And NC State will have excellent field position for their first possession, the 49-yard line of Notre Dame. Ramon Henderson knocked him out of bounds. 49-yard punt, a 14-yard return. And here comes Brennan Armstrong. At 23 years old, he'll be 24 in October. He's the younger of the two quarterbacks. Sam Hartman turned 24 this past summer. First year here, after five at Virginia, and solid. He was their leading rusher. 19 carries for 96 yards in that win at UConn. They played mistake-free football in the opener. Had just one penalty and didn't turn it over. And on the first play from scrimmage, it's Julian Gray for no gain. Well played by D.J. Brown, one of the safeties for the Irish. And a big point of emphasis this week for the Wolfpack have been trying to create more explosive plays. Last week, UConn did a really good job of keeping everything in front of them. Brennan Armstrong made good decisions and ran it when nothing was there. But now, really trying to push the ball down the field against quality corners. Jordan Houston, the running back, there is movement. Adam Savoy is the referee. Ball start. Offense number 29. Five yard penalty. Second down. Tight end Christopher Tootle. Dave Doran very pleased that they had just one penalty in that win at UConn. Matter of fact, we talked to the Notre Dame coaches yesterday, Greg. They said among the most positive things, and there have been many. The execution, you know, they haven't had substitution issues and some of the things you run into early in the season. 
On second and 15, the lefty Armstrong fires. They got the penalty yardage back. Well, I believe they're going to spot him out of bounds back near the 49 yard line where this possession started. It's KC Concepcion, a freshman, that they think has a chance to be their best receiver this year. He's got a very bright future and a good job there by the veteran Brennan Armstrong trying to make third down just a little bit more manageable. Concepcion stepped out of bounds just a little bit earlier, but now they have the freshman started in the game and the quarterback looked accurate on his first attempt. Flushed from the pocket and he throws it away. Well, they didn't have an explosive play. They didn't have a play of more than 20 yards against UConn. Their longest pass play was 19. The longest run was 18. But Brennan Armstrong told us, Greg, I felt like if I didn't make a mistake, we were going to win the game. We had the better team. I checked it down a lot. I didn't throw it deep down the field very often. They know they'll have to take some shots today against the Notre Dame team. Sometimes a check down and a punt, especially with the defense that you have on your side of the field, sometimes that can be considered a positive drive. But of course, like you said, against a capable offense, they got to score. Caden Nooncaster under pressure. End over end punt. Chris Tyree makes the fair catch near the 10 yard line. 39 yard punt. Sam Hartman back on offense after this. All right, Kevin, hoping for an impressive performance. They actually dropped in the poll from last week to this week after a less than impressive performance against Indiana. Quick pass and a quick tackle. Jaden Greathouse knocked down by Davin Van. We mentioned the history for Sam Hartman three times while at Wake Forest. He played against NC State. Went one and two. But Despite the big passing yardage numbers, the six interceptions in three games and 13 sacks, a big problem. And he's already been sacked once today. Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator, thinks they have been able to rattle him in the past. They forced an interception on the first possession of the game last year. From Hartman, to Jakeen Harris is not playing today. Estime, nothing there as well. C.J. Clark in the middle of that front three on defense. Just a terrific start on first and second down for NC State. Backed up with the student section just to Sam Hartman's right. It's the loudest part of the field right now. On third and ten. Five receivers, three to the left of Hartman. The play clock at four. Just the three-man rush down the middle and almost intercepted. At the 20-yard line, Devin Boykin stepped in front of Jaden Thomas. And more early struggles for Sam Hartman against the Wolfpack. And how about the break? And look at the eyes of Devin Boykin looking in the backfield the entire time. Sam Hartman staring that route down, trying to get it in front of the safety's face. Very fortunate that there was that collision because Boykin's likely going to bring that one in for great field position in the interception. So here's McPherson again. He didn't punt at all in the opener against Navy in Dublin. His first punt of the season and wasn't until the third quarter in game two against Tennessee State. He's already punted as many times today as he did in the first two games of the season. He hit a bomb brought back by Coit. 59 yard punt for McPherson and a 10 yard return. Tackled by D.J. Brown. Well, the non conference marquee matchup comes your way tonight on ESPN at 7 o'clock. I know national championship winning quarterback Mr. McElroy will be watching number three <laughs> Alabama hosting number 11 Texas Pat McAfee and his group will have an alternate broadcast on ESPN 2 of course a competitive game last year in Austin I'm counting the minutes of that one Sean. I'm, I'm pretty fired up but please stay at least for the end of this one <laughs> Michael Allen the ball carrier well, how about the 2010 National Championship game? Who's that guy? I don't know. He's a lot skinnier than he is now, though, that's for sure. 
He only threw the ball 11 times. That's all we needed. And completed six. I'm surprised you didn't get yanked. 58 <laughs> yards passing. Not the title game record. Mark Ingram and Trent Richardson were pretty good. <laughs> Maybe the record for the low end. That was Alabama's first national championship under Nick Saban. Pass for Michael Allen is incomplete. You want to add? I managed the game to 1 0. That's all that matters. Let's not. Stats are just a glam spot. What do you think about that game tonight? I think it's going to be a heck of a showdown. I think Texas is the most talented Texas team since 2009, and, and they match up in a lot of great spots. But man, winning in Tuscaloosa is extremely difficult. Third down and six. Neither team has had a first down yet. Here's pressure from Notre Dame and the throw on target, but not taken in. Intended for Porter Rooks. That was a good looking throw by Brennan Armstrong. Thomas Harper, the transfer from Oklahoma State, had the coverage. And that was an excellent throw there by Brennan Armstrong, exactly where it needs to be. And the transfer, as you can see, Thomas Harper closing in over the top. Great coverage and a great defensive play. Well, if there are questions about NC State, the wide receiver position might be one of them. Although the coaches don't really feel that way. Hayden Noonkester punting for the second time. And Tyree, another fair catch. They'll have four yards better field position to start this possession after a 40 yard punt. ABC College Football is presented by Gillette Labs, the next generation of shaving. Leaving with the thunderstorms this morning and the heavy rain we had here in Raleigh. The weather's a lot better than the last time Notre Dame was here in 2016. The remnants of Hurricane Matthew really impacted the game. The only touchdown was on that block punt returned by Dexter Wright. 16 yards for a touchdown. You were one of the broadcasters. Right? <laughs> was. And it was, if you like offense, it wasn't your style of game. But we all thoroughly enjoyed seeing Tom Luganbill drenched from head to toe before we were even within an hour of kickoff. There were 10 fumbles combined in that game. We had heavy rain here this morning, but this grass field is in great shape. It is the home opener for NC State. Third possession for the Irish. They have minus 11 yards of offense, and that was a miscommunication. The pass well behind Jaden Thomas. So far, Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator, really challenging the protection and the run game at the offensive line. Working a lot of pressure, secondary pressures there. Sean Brown, safety coming off the edge, and then a little later on third down, bringing pressure up the middle, recognizing the right guard is a question mark for Notre Dame. They put their best pass rusher, Davin Van, over Rocco Spindler, and he drags. Sam Hartman down for a sack. It's been a really aggressive start for NC State. Hartman one for three for zero yards, sacked once. And that catch is not made along the sideline. And over the shoulder attempt again by Jaden Thomas. There's Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator. He does an excellent job. Very confusing structure. Three defensive linemen. Three safeties at times, very active linebackers led by Peyton Wilson, who's terrific, number 11. It's a really good group at all three levels. The only question mark is safety, and they were really happy with what they've seen so far in the first game. Third and 10 again. We still have not had a first down. Hartman takes off running and has the first down. He gets collared at the 30-yard line by Peyton Wilson. But a 16 yard run by Hartman and the first first down of the game for either team. There's nobody in the box defensively for NC State. Hartman said it in the open. He's not a crazy runner, but he can run. And he kept you honest right there on the third and long. To have by far the best play offensively for Notre Dame up to this point. Like a design run, a good call by Jared Parker, the new offensive coordinator for the Irish, their tight end coach last year. There's a screen and well defended again by NC State. Jaden Greathouse the reception. You look at Jared Parker with an aggressive group like this defensively a real important aspect of your offensive plan 
you have to go with some misdirection. You have to get those defenders flowing to the left and then go back to the right. That's going to be a bigger part as they move forward. Once they recognize just how quick and aggressive these guys are, they're going to have to confuse them and get some things going in different directions. After a gain of two, second and eight. Here comes pressure again from NC State. A man wide open in the flat. And another Notre Dame first down. Jadarian Price, part of what has been a five-man rotation at running back. They don't have Devin Ford today as a part of that. But eight touches in the first two games and two touchdowns for the Irish. That's a gain of nine. And Audric Estime is still the bell cow. He's going to get the most looks at running back, but more a traditional downhill between the tackles type of back. But Jadarian Price and Jeremiah Love, two youngsters with a ton of speed that can really break the game open in the open field. Price stays in as the running back, a sophomore from Denison, Texas. Good hole on the left side. And he has 11 and a first down and a big tackle made by Devin Boykin or that might have gone to the house. And great job on the counter action with pullers all around. And you can see just the flowing linebackers, they meet them in the spot, but it's well accounted for by the Irish offensive front. And a nice run play design there by Jared Parker. They think they have, if not the best, certainly among the best offensive tackle tandems in the country. And Joe Alt, the left tackle, consensus preseason All-American, and Blake Fisher, the right tackle. This would, a, this would be a spot here, Sean, where you might take a shot downfield. On first and ten, nearing six minutes to go in a scoreless quarter. Good cut by Price. He got banged down by Boykin. But Notre Dame finding a rhythm on offense, another nine-yard gain. Offensive line starting to get a little movement up front. It's very difficult against this group. Their number one goal every time they take the field defensively is to stop the run, and that's a really tall order against Notre Dame. Another shot opportunity here. Second and short, heavy play action. See if you can't throw it over their head. Jeremiah Love, an electric playmaker, is in it running back. They faked it to him. And they have enough for the first down. Completion to Mitchell Evans. They're replacing a great tight end in Michael Mayer. Haven't used the tight ends as much, but they think they'll be more involved as the season goes along. And they feel good about their production. Not a guy that's just going to completely be the centerpiece of your offense like Michael Mayer a year ago, but guys that are certainly capable and are very willing along the line of scrimmage to contribute in the run game. Ninth play of the drive. On the delay, Price trying to bounce it outside. Didn't really find any running room there. Peyton Wilson made the tackle. One of the leaders of this defense. Terrific linebackers battled through a lot of injuries in his career. He told us yesterday he couldn't remember it was eight or nine surgeries, but he's had both shoulders operated on more than once. Knee problems as well. Still out there battling as a graduate student. He's the heart and soul of the defense. The signal caller is arguably the most athletic guy on the team. 23 year old linebacker. Flea flicker Hartman under duress content to throw it away. He got taken down by Davin Van. They've renewed their acquaintance very quickly and frequently here in the first 11 minutes and now a flag. It might be a grounding call against the Irish. Intentional grounding, offense number two. All the place to start the foul. Also down, third down. Marcus Freeman was out on the field to argue the call. He's still in conversation with the officials. And it's whether or not Sam Hartman gets outside the tackle. It's a little difficult right there. It does appear as though he is a little bit outside the tackle box as he releases the football. It's good pressure there by NC State, but that's one right there. Maybe they'll take a look at it because it did look like he had broken outside. Let's bring in Matt Austin quickly. Matt, what'd you think? Yeah, the reason that's intentional grounding is the quarterback gave up the ball, then got it back. If you're the second guy to get the ball, you can't ground it. Excellent clarification. Thank you, Matt Austin. 
Estime on third and 21 stumbles across the 40. It's the 36 yard line. Robert Kennedy tripped him up. And the decision here for Freeman would be a long field goal after that 11 yard gain. It looks like they're going to try it with Spencer Schrader. This would be a 54 yarder. There's almost no breeze right now. His career long is 52. That's while he was at USF. It came in 2021 against Temple. In his first year at Notre Dame after four at South Florida. And he has plenty of leg on that one. And it is good. Spencer Schrader from 54. And the Irish are first on the board. Well, Marcus Freeman told us yesterday he has a big leg. He showed it off. Spencer Schrader, his first field goal as a member of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. He attempted only one in the game against Navy, he missed a 42 yarder. But Marcus Freeman told us he's made them from 60 plus in practice. So obviously, demonstrating practice, you can do it. The coach is going to give you a chance to do it in the game. This season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Notre Dame's first two drives, minus 11 yards, a couple of three and outs. That last drive, 50 yards, they picked up four first downs. Had the ball for just under six minutes. Yeah, and we talked momentarily during that drive. It was time for Jared Parker to really start to incorporate some misdirection. So as a result, you saw at least two counter run plays. You saw a bootleg play as well. So going to be beneficial. The playing enclosure. We are ready to resume play. As drones are in the playing enclosure. But either way, really a, a terrific adjustment there by Jared Parker on that last drive. And they're making an announcement that lightning is within 15 miles of the stadium. So they're telling folks if they want to leave to seek shelter, they will be able to re enter. That announcement on their beautiful new message board, scoreboard to our left, debuting today $15 million. They have a new sound system as well. We can. Confirmed that that works very well. About 75 speakers around the stadium. Schrader's kickoff is a touchback. Here's Molly McGrath. Sean, you mentioned weather uh, expected to enter the area, and also some isolated showers are supposed to come into the area soon, too, I'm told. And before the game, Dave Doran said their spring game and their first scrimmage of the year both took place in a monsoon. And he told his team pregame that they couldn't be more prepared for this kind of weather. And he said he'd prefer if it dumps rain, saying this kind of weather is what we want in a physical line of scrimmage game like this, the nastier, the better. Sean? It looks like he might get what he wants. Brennan Armstrong, his quarterback, told us yesterday he doesn't really like throwing the ball in the rain. Doesn't mind the wind, but doesn't like throwing the ball under wet conditions. Jordan in Houston, the ball carrier for two, and now it's NC State's third possession. Hoping, like Notre Dame, the third possession will result in the first first down of the game for the Pack. With the passing attack still at this point, of the season still very much a work in progress. It's going to be up to the offensive line a lot of new faces to be able to create a bit of a push against a stout defensive front. Armstrong runs out of bounds and no gain on that play actually a loss of one. So eight plays now on offense and a total of 10 yards for the Wolfpack. Shades of a year ago when they had a very difficult time on offense in part due to injuries to their quarterbacks, especially Devin Leary who was the preseason ACC player of the year last year. Four man rush for Notre Dame. Armstrong hit as he throws and it's still caught for a first down their first of the game. 
Bradley Rosner, big target, transfer from Rice. And a good job to hang in there by Armstrong as he got hit by Leofau. And a good pressure applied by Leofau on the game. And how about Rosner climbing the ladder and making the play at six foot four? Those are the types of balls he's got to reel in. In his eighth year playing football, either in junior college or college football, there's another big hit by Leofau. This one on KC Concepcion. Loss of two on that play. They think Rosner will be more involved as the season goes along. He didn't show up here until August, so he is very new to this NC State program, but had 101 career catches at Rice. Jordan Houston threw a big hole, and he lunges forward for another NC State first down to the Notre Dame 42. An excellent job by the left side of the offensive line. There wasn't really any Notre Dame defenders left to the center. The second level, they were anticipating pass. They took off. And as a result, it was a well-executed run play for the pack. They have a new offensive coordinator in Robert and I. Tim Beck was the OC here last year, now the head coach at Coastal Carolina. Well, and I reunited with Armstrong. He was Brennan's offensive coordinator two years ago at Virginia when they had a prolific year. Here's Concepcion firing downfield. It should have been intercepted through the hands of Benjamin Morrison. So you can see good pressure applied up front there defensively as Concepcion takes a big hit and excellent coverage by the outside Jaden Mickey and then over the top there by Benjamin Morrison. Morrison has good hands. He had six interceptions last year when he was a freshman All-American. Made his high school ball at Brophy Prep in Phoenix. Grew up in Leesburg, Virginia. Final seconds of the first quarter. 3-0 Notre Dame. Armstrong scrambling. And they'll give him just inside the 41-yard line. Leah foul there again with Javante Jean-Baptiste to transfer from Ohio State. You see a little bit of the toughness on display there by Brennan Armstrong who's kind of looking at his right shoulder as he walks to the sideline delivering a big blow. You're not going to see him slide. Robert and I have been trying to do so for years. He's going to lower his shoulder and finish his runs. It just shows you how competitive he is as a player. He got banged around against UConn said he was glad for a couple of extra days in between games. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Season long student sections around the country competing to be the Taco Bell Live Moss student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. On to the second quarter here in Raleigh. Sold out Carter Finley Stadium, 3 0 Notre Dame. Third down and eight for NC State. They're at the Irish 40. Armstrong against a four man rush. Throws, has a man open, and it's off target. Across the sideline over the head of KC Concepcion Xavier Watts had the coverage. And that's a really favorable matchup for the Wolfpack. You're working your most explosive wide receiver in Concepcion on a vertical slot fade and Armstrong unfortunately just misses too far to the outside. That was a very very big opportunity missed there by NC State. There's Caden Noonkester again, former walk on, became the starting punter for the last four games of last season. And Tyree with the bluff, and it goes into the end zone. There is a flag down at the 22 yard line on the far sideline. There is no foul on the play. First down, Notre Dame. Some featured games on ESPN Plus coming up later today. SMU at Oklahoma at 6 p.m. Grambling State against number 14 LSU at 7.30. Nickel State and TCU at 8. To get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. That SMU Oklahoma game is really interesting. Obviously, SMU going to be joining the ACC. 
Well, so. they've made the announcement that the game is being suspended. Apparently, Lightning now within that eight mile radius. And we believe that to be true. ESPN, as you might be able to tell, though our coverage is so terrific, led by Phil Dean and Scott Johnson. We've been down to four cameras here for the last few minutes because we've taken our personnel off the field uh, several moments ago. So Marcus Freeman talking to the officials about what the protocol will be here. They knew this was a possibility when they met pregame. Fans being asked to move to the nearest exit and follow the instructions of security personnel will return to their vehicle. There's also shelter next door. One of the nice things about this setup, PNC Arena, the home of the Carolina Hurricanes of the National Hockey League, is just a few hundred yards away. Well, that's a great place to go during the storm that we believe is coming. We're told by Mike Sunheim, the terrific PR guy for the Hurricanes, that they have seven of their players here today. Watch Notre Dame and NC State. So weather delay just seconds into the second quarter. Notre Dame up three to nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Devin Nagani, Booker McFarland, Darren Olofsky in studio. And you see that green and red and yellow. That is not a good sign in the Raleigh area right now. We are in a weather delay as Notre Dame is up three nothing. Early part of that second quarter back here in studio, our game 3 0. Notre Dame, as I mentioned before, Dan Olavsky, Booger McFarland, Kevin Nagandi here. We will keep you up to date if we do go back out there to Raleigh. And hopefully the skies clear up with that lightning. We will take you out to that action. But what, we, what do we see right now? Because when you look at the weather conditions, Sam Hartman, again, played at Wake Forest. Yeah. It's the fourth time he's faced NC State, one and two against the Wolfpack. The weather seems to favor NC State because right now Hartman cannot get into a rhythm. Yeah, he can't get into a rhythm, but Notre Dame really wants to run the football with Esther Man Price, and I've been very impressed with this NC State defense. It's kind of a hybrid defense, the fact that they can hold up against a run, against a physical offensive line from Notre Dame, only giving up less than two yards of rush so far. Very impressive by that defense. It's really about what play caller for either team can adjust quickest, because mm. you go into a game thinking, well, we want to throw it around. Really, both teams are Brendan Armstrong for North Carolina State, kind of make some plays with his legs. And really the story early on in this football game by both teams is drops. I mean, the, both quarterbacks have thrown the ball relatively or relatively efficiently in the weather. Drops by both teams. Maybe as a coaching staff, this weather delay could be a little bit of a blessing. Hey, yeah. let's sit down. How do we want to kind of change how we're going to attack either defense? You mentioned the hybrid defense. That's that 3-3-5 three, three, yes. look, right? Yes. That yeah. kind of creates a little chaos if you want to expand the playbook and throw the ball down the field. Absolutely, because now the offensive line doesn't know where the blisters are coming from. And you would think you can run the football because the gaps are huge between the ends and the nose tackle. But it also gives you some advantages when you're blitzing the quarterback. And so look for Notre Dame to maybe make some adjustments so they can give Sam Hartman a little bit more time. Okay, we will see how this plays out, of course, and keep you up to date. Right now, that's the opposite of fantastic. That is the weather that we're <laughs> dealing with here. Ton of green and yellow and red you will see in Raleigh and that's why a lightning delay between Notre Dame and NC State when it clears up we will take you there we're dealing with a ton of weather issues throughout the Northeast so much more coming up after this. Dan, Boog, Kevin back with you, and that is not a sight many uh, football fans want to see. The rain is not the issue it's the lightning through the clouds in Raleigh that has everybody concerned as we're dealing with a weather delay on ABC between Notre Dame and NC State right now the fighting Irish up three nothing early parts of that second quarter Sam Hartman fourth time he's facing the Wolfpack of course the first three when he was at Wake Forest so dealing with the weather issues throughout the country right now and in, in Raleigh it's three nothing Notre Dame against NC State. All right, we'll keep an eye on that game on ESPN. Right now, we're keeping an eye on the weather as we're dealing with that rain and, of course, the lightning delay. That is the reason why we are here in studio and not in Raleigh. But mm. Molly McGrath just caught up with uh, Marcus Freeman, the head coach of Notre Dame, with much more. 
Well, Kevin, I spoke with Notre Dame head coach Marcus Freeman as he was walking off of the field. Both teams are currently in their locker rooms, but he said that they're going to take advantage of this opportunity. They see the stoppage in play as an opportunity because they were struggling so much in the first half. He said, we need to game plan and regroup, and he's going to spend the most of the time in the locker room with his team, letting them rest, drawing up game plans and adjustments, saying we really needed this reset. So, uh, and lightning just struck minutes ago and I'm told it's another 30 to 60 minutes or so until play can resume as the rain is coming down behind me. So uh, you guys may have to tap dance in the studio a little bit longer. Molly, thank you so much. With these two guys, we're good. We got Trust it. me, we're good. Well, uh, th this gives them the opportunity to continue to talk. And, and Kev, think about this. As, as a player, when I go in the locker room right now and I know I got an hour delay, I'm getting undressed. I'm taking, I'm taking my full uniform off. I'm putting my shorts on because I got to start the whole process back over. Stop laughing. I got I, I, I to start the whole process back over, get retaped, because I got to mentally sure. wind down and then mentally ramp back up to the play again. To your point, though, right? Like, it's kind of like, hey, we've got a we've got mindset. Let's go back down to get yeah. back up, right? But then with Marcus Freeman telling Molly that this is actually a good thing for them right now, what do you make of that? Because you don't often hear a coach saying, we will take the break. Yes. I, I think it's to the point before of you go into the game and you always are – kind of prepared for weather, but until the weather actually comes and you see how it impacts your football team, what's the footing like? Is our quarterback able to go under center? Yeah. Do we have to be in the gun? Mm. Can we – all those things kind of – you reassess how you want to play the football game. Feels like Marcus Freeman is also painting this um, in a better light here. Hey, we're going to be okay. We're going to be – I'm actually looking sure. forward to this break, you know, right? Cool. It's that mentality <laughs> that you're setting the tone inside this locker room as they wait to see when they're going to be back out on the field. Running the you're watching bonus coverage on ESPN because we're dealing with a lightning delay in Raleigh right now. Notre Dame up 3-0 against NC State early part of the second quarter. We heard Molly McGrath just a few minutes ago talk about a lightning strike that took place in the last 20 minutes, and that will now lengthen the delay. There's that strike over there. Wow, on the left side. Uh, thankfully, everybody indoors, and we will see how this plays out. It looks like it's going to be at least... 30 more minutes on a delay here. Right now, the opposite of great is that the weather delay continues in Raleigh. Notre Dame up 3-0 against NC State. Lightning delay at the moment. We will have uh, an update from our game crew coming up right after these messages on ABC. Kevin Nagani back in our ABC studios dealing with a lightning delay in Raleigh. Right now, Notre Dame up 3-0 against NC State early part of the second quarter. We had lightning in the last half hour, and Molly McGrath was fantastic with her last update. Let's go back to Molly live here. What's the very latest on the situation, Molly McGrath? Well, Kevin, I was just in a meeting with officials and stadium operations staff, and they said that another storm cell is heading this way. It's less than 15 miles out. And we actually just had another lightning strike within the area just minutes ago. Um, so they're going to reconvene at 2 p.m. Eastern and decide what to do moving forward. But in the meantime, the teams are going to stay in the locker room. They're not allowed to leave the locker room area until lightning strike uh, within eight miles and then 30 minutes after that. So they're going to wait but right now officials are meeting with the coaches in their respective locker rooms as well to talk about a condensed halftime now because this delay happened at the very beginning of the second quarter both of these teams when they take the field will have a mandatory 10 minute warm up and then they'll have to play the entire second quarter and then they'll have to go back for halftime again so they're talking to the coaches about a condensed halftime 5 10 15 minutes the coaches have to agree on what they're going to do and because this weather has been so unpredictable i asked the officials in the stadium staff in what situation would this game be postponed completely and they said according to the acc as long as they're able to resume play by midnight tonight, mm. they are going to play this game. So it could be a very long day here in Raleigh, Kevin. <laughs> Outstanding work, Molly. Thank you so much. Ton of information there. As we see, you see all those X's. That's not good. You see a no. bunch of color. That's not good. You don't want to see a bunch of color, especially the yellow and the red around that green. Uh, that is in Raleigh, of course. And, and what, let's just go off of what she just said with that update. Uh, we've dealt with lightning delays yeah. before, and usually it's 30 to 60 minutes. You let it pass. The idea, though, that you can get another yeah. cell coming in, another delay, and 
potentially you play that entire second quarter and then you have a five to ten minute halftime and then you got to play a second half. What's the approach here if you're a head coach? Well, I, I think if you're a head coach, you tell your team, all right, guys, let's start over. Everybody get undressed, put your shorts and T-shirt on, and let's start this as if we're coming in here at the beginning of the game. Mm. Let's, let's do that. Let's relax. Let's get something to eat. Nutrition is going to be an issue. It's going to be a long day. We've got to make sure we're, we're hydrated and we're fueled. Second thing is, if there's not going to be a quote-unquote halftime, if this is going to be your halftime, coaches, any adjustments that we need to make, let's make them now because we may only have like five minutes after the second quarter because we're trying to get this game in on time. Yeah, and two things. So at 12 o'clock start, most players get into the field around 9, 9.30 yeah. in the morning. So they've already been there for four-plus hours. Yeah. If this game does start in the next 30 or 40 minutes, hypothetically, you're looking at a seven- or eight-hour day for these young men. That is a dual, a daunting mental yeah, yeah. thing. You know, Book knows this. So often coaches throughout the offseason, they throw these curveballs at players of, you know, sudden things of, hey, practice is going to be in five minutes instead of 45 minutes or sudden changes or and the message of control the things you control. Whoever's done that the best in the offseason is going to benefit the most from it because it's hard. It, candidly, it is. You're sitting there and you just have no control over anything that's going to happen. And what team – mentally, more than X's and O's, is capable of kind of just saying, all right, we're, we can't control it. We're just going to go play at some point and not taking a massive step back. Whoever's kind of handled those situations better in the offseason is going to be better equipped for And it. then also realize once we get back on the field, the field's going to be wet. Let's yeah. make sure we got the right shoes on. So let's do all the things that we need to do to make sure we can be the team that comes out and we don't make excuses. Well, it was a prolonged rain delay. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the right shoes. We no were one cares. Up. Exactly. At the end yeah. of the day, no, no one's one going to care. The committee's not going to sit back for Notre Dame in a couple weeks if they're 6, 7, and 0 and go, uh, you know what Notre Dame had to deal with? They're really – they won't care. It's <laughs> they either, don't you care. Want lost. And that's they don't unfair, care. <laughs> yeah. but you got to figure out a way to they make don't. it happen. Part of the game, and of course, we will keep you up to date and what's going on in Raleigh as well as that moving cell coming in. 30 at home versus Utah State. Wow, it and balances you kept throwing? itself out. We won. You kept throwing. You, 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 kept, kept, you, you kept throwing. We didn't have any options <laughs> behind me. Oh, no. you, kept, and you won? <laughs> oh, my uh, goodness. All right. Hopefully we get some football coming your way here on ABC in Raleigh, and that is Notre Dame up 3-0 over NC State. <laughs> We're dealing with a lightning <laughs> delay. That's why I love you, Dan. You tell us the good, and you're yeah. also going to admit the bad. Yeah. I'm just one of 30. Just, I got to sit next to the boat. Yeah. That, that kept, might be your best going. game. You're one of 30, and you won. One of 30, and I think the one was a bubble. <laughs> Four after this. Oh. This is our pictures coming in from Raleigh right now as the rain, the lightning. We're going to have a live update from Molly McGrath coming up right after these messages on your local ABC affiliate. Kevin Agani back in studio. This is a great sight to see in Raleigh. Fans coming back inside the stadium right now as they've been dealing with the lightning delay. Right now, Notre Dame up 3-0 against NC State. Early parts of the second quarter for much more in the very latest on when we will see some action. Let's go back to Molly McGrath. Molly? Well, Kevin, there was good news in my most recent meeting with officials, the schools, and stadium staff. We are now less than 10 minutes out from the all clear here in Raleigh, so teams can start to take the field around 225 Eastern. There's a storm cell south, but it's just going to be rain. There's not any more lightning expected for the rest of the day, hopefully. So teams are going to take the field at 225. They'll have a mandatory 10 minute warm up, and then play will resume or supposed to resume at 235 p.m. Eastern and um, take a look at this interesting video. There was a lot of talk in that meeting about issues with the game clock. While we were taking shelter under here, there was a loud boom. All of the power went out in the stadium. The large um, video monitor was struck by lightning here and they were worried about the game clock and whether or not it was able to be used in the second uh, in the second half of the game. But the game clock is fine. They were able to resolve that issue. So they're going to go out onto the field, uh, resume play at 235 and then they're going to play the second quarter as is and then the teams have agreed to a condensed 15 minute halftime Kevin excellent stuff there Molly thank you so much I mean the game clock the big board struck by lightning I'm just I'm just happy everybody's safe as we are 17 minutes away potentially from a kick but that could play a huge role if, if, if they didn't have a game clock for quarterback tell us your thoughts about that 
I'm just no kind of every single play, one of the routines as a quarterback is play gets done and you're looking to the sideline, you're looking to the clock, you're looking to the sideline because at some point, you know, you got you to gotta check the, where the play clock is or whatnot and just understanding game situation and then you got to be counting on the official to kind of give you that information. So, you know, I think both these teams have veteran quarterbacks yep. that have played a ton of college football, so it's not like this is a young man getting his first or second start in college football and he's got to deal with that. So hopefully that doesn't become that big of a burden. Um, I think the fact that they handled the situation properly yeah. and hopefully they'll be able to get the game started. But it was interesting to Molly's point that there's another cell coming, Boog, and it's going to be at least rain. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, that this is when, as a coach, you're talking to your players or leaders, quarterbacks, yep. you're going, hold on to the football, hold yep. on to the football. We win this game. Whoever, whoever doesn't give the ball away, Who's going to win this football game? Well, and now we know at 235 Eastern, we're going to start playing ball. So as a team now, we have something to look forward to. Sure. We can focus. Let's get our game plan together. Make our adjustments. We now have ball coming. So hopefully the guys can get their uniforms back on because yeah. I had them getting undressed earlier. Yeah. Get like the uniform, 12 times. Get 12 times. <laughs> get your uniform back on. Let's get stretched out because we don't need any hamstring pulls. We don't need any soft tissue injuries. And let's get focused and ready to, in the mindset to go back and play football. Put the okay, music so, back on. But yeah, exactly. Da Dan, and Dan would prefer country music. Dan, <laughs> because we were playing that in yeah. the green room earlier. Dan talked a little bit about the quarterback perspective. Yeah. And you're going to run the football. Mm -hmm. I want the defensive lineman perspective in a game like this. Are you loving it? Because you know you're going to see the ball coming your way multiple times with carries. Well, you also know that it's, it's going to be a, a run fest. Yeah. You have to worry about your footing because you're going to get double teams. And you got to make sure you can anchor and hold up against those double teams. No longer is this a fast track where we can go get the quarterback. Now you got to go in. You got to tighten that chin strap up. Yeah. It's going to be a physical style of football. I want it to rain. Football weather to me is about 60 degrees, overcast, maybe a few sprinkles. I don't want it hot. Big fellas like it nice and cool. And so this is going to be a game where as a nose tackle or defensive line. You're lineman, loving this. You can make a ton of tackles. Get a name for you. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. Yeah, in that's the end, this. this is how, no, <laughs> how our boy gets his name in the paper. This is how Booger gets his name in the paper. And trust us, it's like 64 degrees in the studio <laughs> because you don't want it hot. This so is we're true. Aware. Uh, we're aware, 64, man. 64, you're being very kind. Oh. <laughs> all right, we will keep you up to date on the situation. Situation, but the good thing is fans are coming into the stadium and hopefully we have some football coming your way in the next 15 minutes. We welcome you back live to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're at 1250 local time about an hour, nearly an hour and 45 minutes ago. This game between Notre Dame and NC State was suspended due to Severe weather in the area. We had plenty of rain, thunder, and lightning. But as you look at a live look at the field, the skies are brightening. We haven't seen lightning in a while, and this game's scheduled to be resumed in just a few minutes. A moment ago, our Molly McGrath with Wolfpack coach Dave Doran. Coach, what'd you guys do during the delay? How'd you keep your team ready? Well, we had them take off some wet stuff, put on some dry stuff, relax. Told them it'd be, you know, 30 minutes to an hour and a half. Some of the guys got a snack, started re-engaging with them, talked as coaches, you know, what can we do, what are they doing to us, how can we play better, and then got them back together and talked. They're in a good space. Let's get out here and play football in the rain. Rain is expected to continue. Yeah. How does that change your game plan? Well, ball security is going to be a big deal. You know, like I said earlier when I was talking to you, getting the football from the center to the quarterback and then the exchanges, the field position, it's going to be one of those games. It's going to be an ugly old school game. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Great work by Molly during the delay. Sean McDonough and Greg McElroy. I asked you during the break if you played in a situation like this during your time at Alabama. You said not one that uh, was this long. But when you heard Dave Doran talk, you get the feeling a little bit of advantage here to be the home team in this situation. It is. You have all the amenities at your disposal. Of course, the away locker room setup in every stadium is a little different. Some are nicer than others. But the home team just has so much more access to the things that they might need to re-engage in the game. So it'll be interesting, I think, for Notre Dame to get off to a really fast start because they were starting to figure things out offensively before the end of that weather delay and they're ready to go sparse crowd back in the stadium it'll be interesting to see if more people come in as we go along it's first and ten for Notre Dame there was a touchback on the last play and a big hitter right out of the break Audric Estime is going to go the distance an 80 yard touchdown Well, no, 
another lightning bolt here at Carter Finley Stadium. And just an excellent start here for Notre Dame. Absolutely ideal, perfect block on the kick out by the outstanding left tackle Joe Alt. Audric Estime makes a goal every single week to be able to extend. Last week he had a 50 yard run this week. The goal was 60 and he's out the gate with the first play after the weather delay for a huge score. The extra point is good by Spencer Schrader. Well the offenses on both sides were struggling before the break. There were 83 yards of combined offense 15 seconds into the second quarter. Those offensive coaches had time to figure out what they needed to do to get better than they just did on the Notre Dame side. Here's Molly. Yeah, Sean, Marcus Freeman said going into that delay that they needed that reset. Uh, but to Greg's point, this delay definitely was less comfortable for Notre Dame. Dave Doran mentioned the first thing he did during the delay was put his players in dry clothes. As the away team, Notre Dame didn't have that luxury. They stayed in wet clothes, stretched, rested, and didn't have enough food for the extended break. So staff went to stadium concessions and got players hot dogs and brats. But it obviously didn't bother Audric Estime any. <laughs> He had a hot dog. It didn't slow him down. The junior from Nyack, New York, with the longest rush of his career. Previous long was the 50 that Greg mentioned last week in the win against Tennessee State. Traders' kickoff will be a touchback. Just a thing of beauty the way it's blocked out. You see the big left tackle. Joe Alt and Pat Coogan there the left side on the pole kicking out that NC State defender and Audric Estime nobody home on the right hand side he cuts it all the way back and shows off the speed as Marcus Freeman has to love the start for the Irish here after the delay. They had 39 yards of offense before that play now they have 119. NC State has only 44 yards of offense. On 14 plays, can they get it going? Brennan Armstrong, the quarterback. Design run after the play fake. He's in trouble and taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Xavier walks from his safety spot. Closing quickly. No gain on the play. Armstrong three out of seven passing for 24 yards. They've rushed for 20. He's flushed. And dives forward across the 30 chased down by J.D. Bertrand. Outstanding middle linebacker. Bertrand so far when Armstrong's dropped back to pass in an obvious passing situation. He's been responsible for the quarterback. It's been noted that the biggest attribute for Brennan Armstrong is his ability to take off when nothing's there downfield. Bertrand understands that he's going to operate in the QB spy and he's been all over the quarterback so far. Al Golden says Bertrand one of the smartest players he's ever been around and the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame has been around a lot of outstanding players a lot of smart players. Third and four short set and the pass dropped off the hands of Porter Rooks who's had a chance to catch a couple today dropped one that would have been a big play in the first quarter. And that was a really nice route by Porter Rooks just a little slot outside leverage by the defender Thomas Harper a little slot slant that's one you have to reel in. It's going to be presence on the inside you understand you can't get the alligator arms and you got to go up there and snag it for the conversion. Caden Noon Kester punting for the fourth time already. To Chris Tyree, excellent speed as their punt returner. Play clock down to one as they snap it. And there are flags down. If they jumped in the neutral zone, that'll be a fresh first down. It looked like a Notre Dame defender might have jumped across. Yeah, Jack Kaiser. Officials conferring Adam Savoy is the referee. Offside. Defense in the 24. Results in the first set. Well, a big mistake by Kaiser. 
And it gives the Wolf Pack a first down. Brendan Armstrong making his 33rd career start. 31 of those were at Virginia. There is the all time leader in passing yards and in touchdowns. Jordan Houston, the ball carrier, very little there. Howard Cross, another tackle. So far in this game, obviously early, it's been Jordan Houston. He's the more experienced back, but you got to think at some point you're going to see number two, Michael Allen who has tremendous top end speed. He's in the ball game now just to the right of Brennan Armstrong. His speed can be a difference against Notre Dame. Try to get him on the perimeter. He comes to the side of the field. He's the intended receiver. There is a flag down as the pass was incomplete. Flag down back behind the line of scrimmage. Riley Mills had pressure on Armstrong. He's had very little time when he has attempted to pass this afternoon. Holding offense number 74. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Anthony Belton, the left tackle. And here's Belton over here on the left hand side. A little bit of a slow developing half roll, rolling away. You got to be there in protection forever, working against Jordan Batello. You can see him grab the jersey, pull the head down, and a good call by the official. Second and 19, Houston. Crowd starting to get a little restless with this Wolfpack offense. This is shades of last year, where they were one of the worst offensive teams in FBS football. And it was frustrating because the defense and special teams were excellent. They went eight and five last year. At least eight wins in five of the last six seasons for NC State. Under Dave Doran, Armstrong has some running room and slides down. That's unusual, as Greg mentioned earlier. Slides down to the 39, well short of the first down. They need the 46. A good job there defensively from Notre Dame after they gave NC State that free first down after jumping off sides on the punt. They get them behind the sticks, and as a result, they can drop eight in coverage, keep everything in front of them and force Brennan Armstrong to slide short of the line to gain. Noonkester. Short wobbly kick. It takes a good bounce for the Wolfpack and rolls down to the 17 yard line. Spencer Schrader a field goal and then on the first play after an hour and 45 minute weather delay Estimate goes 80 for a 10 nothing Notre Dame lead. ABC College Football presented by Gillette Labs is brought to you by Goodyear. Discover the possibilities. Goodyear, more driven. The legendary Lou Holtz, head coach at both of these programs. Notre Dame head coach from 86 through 96 won a national championship coached at NC State 1972 through 75 at a 33 12 and 3 record. The Irish lead 10 and nothing 80 yard touchdown run on their last play on offense. Meanwhile NC State has 63 total yards for the game on 20 plays. Audrey Gestime had the 80 yard touchdown run weaved ahead for a couple. Aiden White in on the tackle for North Carolina State. It's got to be frustrating for the defensive coordinator Tony Gibson to see another big run last week giving up a 71 yarder to UConn here first play after the break an 80 yarder to Estime just a little out of sync there with their defensive line and linebackers and fitting the run. They got hit for a big touchdown run by Victor Rosa of UConn, a 71 yard run in their opening win against the Huskies in East Hartford. Chris Tyree, the catch, nice catch by the former running back, spent the last three years playing running back. 
But now a wide receiver brings some speed to that position, a three-yard gain. I think he's their most dynamic weapon. He'll continue to evolve as a receiver, but with the ball in his hands, he can really get out in space and hurt you. Crowd trying to help the defense. About half full now, Carter Finley Stadium. It is still raining. And the electricity has gone away, at least for the moment. Five man rush. Pressure on Sam Hartman is pass incomplete in the general direction of Tyree. Jalen Scott came on a blitz. Just overload right here, but look at number two coming right up the middle. That's Jalen Scott runs right through Correll. That's the center. Gets his hand up, collides with Sam Hartman. He's trying to deliver the ball, and it goes airborne. Good rush there from NC State. Jalen Coit back for the punt from Bryce McPherson. Back at his home stage from Indian Trail, North Carolina. Coit from the 31. Nice return, 10 yard return of a 47 yard punt. You're watching ESPN Afternoon College Football on ABC presented by Gillette Labs. Well, the lineup we have for you this weekend and Monday on ESPN today at 4 Eastern Time, the U.S. Open Women's Final. Goff and Sabalenka. Coco trying to win her first major immediately after that. Tonight, number 11, Texas, number 3, Alabama. Tomorrow at 4, the men's final. Djokovic and Medvedev. And then Monday at 8, the season premiere of Monday Night Football, the Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets. Here it's Notre Dame and NC State. 10 nothing Irish from their own 40. Brennan Armstrong on the Wolfpack. Firing one deep, single coverage, jump ball, and it is intercepted by Benjamin Morrison, the outstanding sophomore cornerback. Has it at the 16-yard line. What a play by Benjamin Morrison. Look at his eyes the entire time tracking the football. Never even looks at the wide receiver. He feels exactly where the wide receiver's at. He's able to track it, high point it, reel it in. What an incredible play by the sophomore star. His first interception of this season. He had six as a freshman last year which were the most by any Notre Dame player since Manti Teo had seven back in 2012 when they were the national runners up. The son of an NFL player's dad, Daryl Morrison, who's a huge influence on him, both in football and the rest of his life, played for the Redskins. Straight ahead for almost nothing, Jadarian Price. He ran into Caden Fordham. Figures to see a lot of time today. They like his ability against the run. He's usually a backup. Very physical linebacker. This is a really athletic group at the second level. But they're going to try to get Fordham in there as often as they can, knowing just how committed to the run game Notre Dame is. Hartman handed it off. Jeremiah Love battling for everything he can get. Wound up with a six yard gain. We talked to Coach Freeman yesterday. He said Love is special. True freshman from St. Louis. I really like his game. Just looking at him physically, he reminds me physically in stature to Darren McFadden. A little bit thinner in the lower half, but a long strider, and you get him out in the open field, he can really break it open. He has a very bright future in South Bend. Can really run was a hundred meter champ in Missouri. He's also the Gatorade High School Football Player of the Year in the state of Missouri. Uh, the Christian Brothers. Third down and four for the Irish. Hartman on the run down the sideline and a little bit too far in front of Rico Flores Jr. So fourth and four. And here comes McPherson again. Both teams are one for six on third down. 
point. A nice punt return last time. One of the things Dave Doran said yesterday, he'd like to see improved today over their opener against UConn. Better job in the punt return game by Coit. He's done that today. End over end kick. He has some room on the catch. Made the first man miss. And he's down at the 33 yard line. Tackle by Jack Kaiser. 53 yard punt and eight yard return. Here's a look at today's college football rankings brought to you by Chick fil A, the top 10. And Notre Dame at number 10, the only team in the top 10 playing on the road today. They moved into the top 10 after their victory last week against Tennessee State, up from number 13. And leading here 10 to nothing. NC State ball. Just under eight minutes to go in the half from their own 33. Here comes a blitz. And Armstrong now three for 10 as he tried to fire a slant to Terrell Timmons Jr. And it did not connect. And so far the coverage from Notre Dame has been terrific as you take a look at the new offensive coordinator Robert Nye coming down from Syracuse a guy that made magic with Brennan Armstrong two years ago at Virginia having a difficult time creating favorable matchups against a quality secondary. Shovel pass. Trent Penix for a six yard gain. Graduate student at a tight end. Five yard gain. You know, two years ago, Armstrong with the Nye as his coordinator had one of the best seasons in the country among all college quarterbacks. But then Bronco Mendenhall. The Virginia head coach stepped away and I went to Syracuse. The new coaching staff came in. It was a much different offense and a really rough season for Armstrong. His pass incomplete intended for Juice Farine broken up by Cam Hart. And a nice offense now one out of seven on third down and pressures coming off the right but what's beautiful is it's completely designed perfectly by Al Gord Golden the defensive coordinator they know that that outlet throw has to come out of the hands quick because they're going to overload the protection to the right hand side they have a corner waiting right there and Cam Hart blows it up for another third down stop defense has been excellent for Notre Dame they still haven't allowed a touchdown another flag just as they were about to punt. And this one's going against NC State. Notre Dame offside. Offside. Offense number 10. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. On the last possession on a punt, Jack Kaiser. And it gave the Wolfpack a first down. This one is going against NC State. Just a field goal each in the first two games of the year for Navy and Tennessee State. Caden Noonkester punts again. He might be leg weary already, even with the weather delay. And it's down near the 20 yard line. Time for the Aflac trivia question. I want to know how many current starting NFL quarterbacks were in college at the same time as Sam Hartman, who's still in college. <laughs> there's got to be so many because I think about the league there's got to be 10 12 guys that are still on their rookie deal and starting spots I mean all over the place I can't even imagine what the number is is it half the league perhaps we just turned 24 in July started at Wake Forest in 2018 transferred to Notre Dame this past January Estime up the middle for about seven. And the answer to the Aflac trivia question is you want to guess? Oh, guess 17. Now. 17. <laughs> I would have thought 16 was an aggressive answer. Jalen Hurts, Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow, Tua Tunga by Loa. Just a few. His first year in college for Sam Hartman, that time he was all off. On the snap. 
Marcus Freeman said one of the keys today be good pre snap. Offense number 78. That hasn't happened. Second down. Pat Coogan, the left guard. 2018 was Hartman's first year. Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, and Anthony Richardson were all juniors in high school. <laughs> It's truly remarkable. I mean, he's he's a grown man. I mean, his maturity very much on display here in these first few games. Played five years. There's Estime again struggling for the first down. He appears to have it. Played five years at Wake Forest. Was prolific. That's what he looked like. Look at how much <laughs> he's just changed since he arrived. Gained a lot of weight too. He weighed uh, well under 200 pounds. He's every bit of 212 now. But he told us at the end of last season they were. As the runner was short of the line to gain, it's third down. Didn't look like that live, but they'll try to convert on third down. He said he uh, thought that it was going to be his last game at Wake Forest and his last game at College Football, their bowl game. His brother Joe looks a lot like him. His brother Joe was on the campus of the University of Florida where he's now going to law school. Somebody saw his brother, thought it was Sam. The rumor started spreading that Sam Hartman's in Gainesville and he's going to be transferring to Florida. He runs up. It's Mitchell Evans who takes the snap. He's done that a lot over the years, and that one looks to be the first down for sure. So he said, Sam told us, yes, I hadn't really thought about transferring. But that started a rumor. My advisor even called me and said, hey, what's going on? So he started to think about it. He said, we're not for NIL. He probably would have gone on to pro football, but because there was money, if he transferred, uh, he looked around and obviously a perfect fit really for him and for Notre Dame. Yeah, beautiful spot. And it's obviously a win-win situation for obviously the Irish and for him, but he was already organizing his trainer. He's already organizing his rental car when he was going to be training out in California, but decides to stay in college another year, and the Irish sure are happy to have him. Play fake given time that time then ran out of it. There's a flag thrown where you expect a holding call. Sam got ahead for a couple. Jalen Scott made the tackle. Holding offense number 76. 10 yard penalty. First down. Joe Alt. May his 24th straight start, the son of the former All-Pro John Alt. And considered by Mel Kuyper a Top 10 pick in next year's draft. Number one ranked tackle and number seven overall. So an excellent player and very athletic and has shown already here in the first few games. I mean, he is continuing to progress as a run blocker, just a well rounded talent. Another nice pocket for Hartman is throw on target. Tobias Merriweather tripped up from behind inside the 35. Peyton Wilson ran him down. The big linebacker at 6'4", who ran a sub 4 5 40 in the preseason. Man, they really need Tobias Merriweather to get going. It looked like for a moment Boykin was going to jump it, but there came Merriweather right across the middle, and Hartman does such a great job working the middle of the field. So much of college offense is outside the numbers. Hartman very comfortable working the middle. He hits Merriweather in stride, and they break it open now into NC State territory. Expect a shot play here, possibly. Dane Wilson came off the field after that tackle. It was a 45-yard gain, 30 of it after the catch. Bron Payne taken down by Devon Betty. Wilson might just need a breather. We talked about the eight or nine surgeries, knee and ankle problems. And it's 6-4-2-38. They timed it 4-4-9 in the 40 in the preseason. Tremendous athlete. It's not often you see a middle linebacker running down a wide receiver in the open field. Second down and nine. Down to 310 to go in the half. Hartman dumps it off and it's incomplete. Trying to get it to hold and stays. And this one just a little off the mark. It's a good job on the run pass option read by Sam Hartman, but you see he just kind of flicked it like he was throwing a dart, puts his hands on his helmet, says, oh my gosh, I can't believe I missed it. Just a little off the mark there for the quarterback. They are in field goal range. Spencer Schrader's already made a 54-yarder today in the first quarter. I 
bring pressure here, though, if you're Tony Gibson, see if you can't knock him out of field goal range. They do bring pressure, and they wrap him up and take him down. Aiden White with the third sack of the day for the Wolfpack. Well, it's very difficult. You see Wilson come inside, but it's the corner blitz against that condensed formation. You see those receivers a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage, so you kind of hide there in all the chaos on the right side of the line of scrimmage. White sneaks through and smokes Hartman to make it a very difficult field goal. 56 yards, although he made one from 54 with plenty to spare. Field in good shape despite all the rain. That one is long enough and it hits the upright. Oh, he had plenty of distance, but it hit the left upright and caroms out. What a leg on Spencer Schrader, the transfer from South Florida. Marcus Freeman said he has the strongest leg I've ever been around. We're a believer. Back at Carter Finley Stadium, Raleigh, North Carolina. Notre Dame leading NC State 10 to nothing as we approach the half. Wolfpack ball from their own 38. They have 68 yards of offense. Armstrong forced back another drop. Bradley Rosner couldn't hang on. Brendan Armstrong's family here today. Dad Brent on the left, his brother, his mom. And on the right, his girlfriend, Alexa Spanstra. She's a professional athlete for the Kansas City Current, a professional soccer team. She played at Virginia. That's where she and Brennan met. There's a good throw and catch. And a first down for NC State Juice Farine in a Notre Dame territory with an 11-yard gain. And while the numbers don't look great right now for Brendan Armstrong, he's been pretty accurate. I mean, he's hit receivers in the hands, but there have been three drops at least for the pack. On target again. Julian Gray out of bounds inside the 40. Both teams with all three timeouts left. Now a flag for some extracurriculars. Benjamin Morrison might have been chirping a little too much for the officials. Adam Savoie, the referee. After the play on sportsmanlike conduct, defense number 20. Holding on all the way through contact, and then when he gets up, probably a little chatter over there, and he hits the receiver, Juice Vereen, or excuse me, Julian Gray in the face. Got to keep your head there. One of the best players in the country at his position. As an interception already today, Morrison down the middle. His man was breaking open. It was KC Concepcion. But they did not connect. Here's some boos too. I think some people wanted contact there between Concepcion and number 27, J.D. Bertrand. Didn't look like he really impacted the route. The route's just thrown a little bit too inside and a little too short for Armstrong. Four-man rush. Armstrong flag thrown where you expect a holding call. Armstrong lunged back toward the line of scrimmage, didn't get there. Looked like Howard Cross Russell got foul. taken down. The face. Defense. Yeah, it's the penalty on the defense. It's not always a holding penalty in there. Hands to the face. And there were a couple things here. If you look at two defenders, you look on the right side, number one, he's over there, and the 99 right here. I think you really could have gotten a defensive hold as you see Jean Baptiste throw the right tackle, Timothy McKay, and then Riley Mills hands to the face there on the interior. A good call by the official, and a big break there for the NC State Wolfpack. First down, they're down to the 12 yard line with plenty of time. Here comes Leofow on the blitz, and the receiver got knocked down. There's a flag at the two-yard line. 
holding. Defense number 13. Thomas Harper, the transfer from Oklahoma State, where he played 42 games. Yeah, and a good call there by the official as you see Juice Vereen trying to work inside and then get back to the outside on the corner route where Armstrong ended up throwing it. And Harper just stayed engaged way too long, and it was an easy call for the official. Seven Irish penalties already. First and goal, 134 to go. They're at the six-yard line. Short throw and a nice tackle immediately by Harper on Jordan Houston. And now Notre Dame calls a timeout. Marcus Freeman with this much time timeout. left says, Notre let's Dame. try to get Red another first. possession. Please reset the game clock to 128. So all three timeouts left seconds. for NC State, two left for Notre Dame. I like the timeout there by Marcus Freeman. Yeah. He has two more to use if he wants to. His offense uh, started to find him. Rhythm would not be the word for either offense so far here, Greg, but uh, they've both been getting a little bit better after the rain delay. Yeah, I think that totally changes who you are as a head coach when you have Sam Hartman at quarterback. You're probably not taking that timeout unless you really trust the guy that's pulling the trigger for you offensively so they can be more aggressive. And I think, too, they want to probably settle their defense down. A couple of penalties the last few snaps. Clearly, Marcus Freeman talking to the officials not thrilled with what he's seen the last couple plays not so thrilled with the officials I think he's saying it wasn't really hands to the face this is a good timeout if obviously you want your offense to maybe try to steal some points but also at the same time I think just to calm your guys down in the heat of the moment second year as head coach at Notre Dame for Freeman after one as the defensive coordinator promoted when Brian Kelly left to go to LSU Nine and four last year. The wins over four ranked teams, including winning their bowl game, the Gator Bowl against South Carolina. Trouble on the handoff, and Armstrong got it back. He did not connect with Michael Allen. Don't know if he was trying to give it to Allen or was trying to yank it back. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the offense. Timeout. Xavier Watts was there, couldn't recover it for Notre Dame, and Marcus Freeman uses another timeout. The Armstrong family relieved on the recovery. Here's Kevin. Sean, State Farm Halftime Report. Remember us? We're back here. We're coming back again in <laughs> studio. Dan Orlovsky, Booger McFarland, Kevin Agani here. Colorado continues the role, Dan. Sets up a huge game next week against Colorado State. Shador Sanders, 375-plus yards today. Another tremendous afternoon. He's been outstanding. Meanwhile, we got a good one in Waco. Number 12, Utah in trouble. Yeah, their quarterback struggling without Cam Rising. The physicality in the second half, they battle back, tied up 13 all. We'll also preview Texas versus Alabama, Sean. Greg already a little nervous heading into that matchup on ESPN tonight. All right, Kevin, Notre Dame penalized three times on this drive by NC State. Third down and goal from the nine. Armstrong throws to the end zone. Touchdown. Bradley Rosner. The transfer from Rice, who just wound up here in Raleigh a couple of weeks ago in August. And it's the first touchdown pass of his NC State career for Brennan Armstrong. Their new kicker, Braden Narvison, who replaces the Lou Groza Award winner from last year, Christopher Dunn, the all-time leading scorer in ACC history. Narvison, up and good. He's a transfer from Western Kentucky. Maris Leofau is in charge of Brennan Armstrong, and as soon as he breaks the pocket, he buys a little time. Look, QB spy. Last week, Brennan Armstrong, he was tucking this and running. Now he's keeping his eyes downfield, throws a strike to Rosner, the big body weapon, the transfer from Rice, who reels it in in really tight coverage and a heck of a play there for NC State. And the Armstrong family loves it. They're from Shelby, Ohio, live out in the country about an hour north of Columbus. 
Rosner the catch he's 25 years old. He played three years of football in junior college at Cisco College followed by four seasons at Rice. And he has the juice squad all juiced up. After his first touchdown for the NC State Wolfpack. Rosner, five 100 yard games receiving at Rice last year. They need reinforcements at wide receiver. He could be that guy. Don't know what this yellow object is in the sky, but it has emerged during the kickoff. And Jadarian Price brings it back only to the 22. So Marcus Freeman, a couple of timeouts to save some time for his offense. How do you think he'll play it now, though, Greg, with only the one timeout left? And uh, at Notre Dame offense that has occasionally struggled here in this first half. What I would do, if defense has played great up until that last drive, I would run some type of screen, a high percentage screen or a draw to see if you can get out near the 40 yard line and then you might throw it into overdrive a little bit with your hyper speed tempo stuff. But it would really be dependent on whether or not you could burst one here for 10 to 15 yards to get you started. Sun shining now. Hartman. Looked like he wanted to throw a wheel to love. It looked like he was breaking open. Instead, he almost threw an interception. Threw it toward Mitchell Evans, but it fell incomplete. Robert Kennedy had the coverage. First year player at North Carolina State is a transfer from Old Dominion. That time, Tony Gibson has been pretty aggressive all afternoon. Understandably, though, given the situation and how far they have to go, dropping eight and trying to move those defensive linemen up front. We kind of anticipate much of the same right here. But keep an eye on Hartman with his legs. They spread the field with receivers. Hartman had some time against the three man rush. Now has Tyree wide open. Tyree down the sideline. A couple of defenders with an angle. And he's blasted at the 13. Robert Kennedy and Peyton Wilson ran him down. Tyree just managed to get open behind the defense and he goes for 65 yards. And Aiden White, number three, he's responsible for the flat. He kind of loses track of where Tyree is, comes up, plays the forward wide receiver. Tyree gets in behind him. There's nobody home, and it's a huge play for Notre Dame and another broken defensive assignment there by NC State. Aiden White, one of the best in the country, first team all ACC a year ago. And you'll see him at the bottom of the screen. He walls Tyree out of bounds, kind of loses track of him at that point, collapses on the shallow cross, and there's nobody over the top to account for Tyree in the scramble drill. A great job by Sam Hartman keeping his eyes downfield, staying poised, and Tyree reestablishing himself in bounds after he went out, catching the football, and then turning on the Jets up the field for a big play. Notre Dame with 250 yards of offense, but a lot of that's been on two plays. The 80-yard touchdown run by Estime right out of the weather delay. And now that 65 yard pass play, that's 145 of the 250. Been stacked up for a lot of the day by this Tony Gibson defense, which comes in with 16 straight games of holding their opponents to 30 points or less. That is the longest such streak in FBS football. The last team to score more than 30 against them, Wake Forest in Winston-Salem, November of 2021, led by Sam Hartman. They scored 45 in a three-point win. Hartman to the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. Jaden Greathouse. 13 yards, and again, you go back to the timeouts used by Marcus Freeman. He gave his team a chance to do just this. 33 straight games with a passing touchdown for Hartman. The longest active streak in FBS football. And he now leads all active FBS quarterbacks in career touchdown passes with 117. And that has quieted the crowd, which was raucous after the Wolfpack score. The extra point good by Schrader. 
Just a beautiful design. Hartman's eyes are on one defender. He knows exactly where he's going to go. And as soon as he works that defender with that post on the inside, he knows he's going to have Jaden Greathouse right behind him. Look at the timing. Balls out immediately. It's a very tight window there in the end zone. And the talented freshman, Greathouse, goes down, corrals it, and finds the end zone again this season. 117 career touchdown passes for Hartman. He is now tied for 11th all time in FBS football with Timmy Chang, the Hawaii quarterback, now their head coach. Two more, and he'll move into the top 10 all time to tie Luke Falk of Washington State. That was a big time drive, man. I mean, that's a sixth year quarterback. All the trust in the world from your head coach making a play, taking advantage of a big mistake defensively and stealing some points before the half. There's Gino Gadouli, he's the quarterback coach in his first year here. Came over from Cincinnati. Julian Gray, the ball's on the ground. And it looks like the pack got it back. They have 34 seconds. They'll start around the 27-yard line after a 27-yard return. Decent return there for a minute, but you see the collision. Gray with that left arm getting away from his body just a little bit. Fortunate there. He had one of his own around him to reel that thing in. Colby Baldwin recovered it. So this is not a down the field offense. At least not through the first two games of the season. We'll see how Robert and I and Armstrong, Dave Dorn play it conservatively. Kendrick Raphael takes the handoff, the true freshman with his first career touch. The crowd boos. Three yard gain. They line up fairly quickly. Armstrong zings it. There's Juice Farine across midfield. Timeout. North Carolina State. Their second. 23 yard gain. But they're down to five seconds. An interesting time and clock management here. They sort of half hurried up to run this next play after the conservative first down call. Still an opportunity here though with five seconds left. Obviously a field goal from this part of the field would be nearly impossible. But you give it five or six more yards. You still have a timeout at your disposal. You tell your receivers in the huddle hey get down immediately. And maybe you could think about throwing one towards the end zone or depending on how many you gain. You might be able to try a long field goal. Narvison's career long at Western Kentucky was 53. But he made one from 60 in the pregame. Nothing else. I'd throw a little quick five yard throw to clear down and then heap one towards the end zone. Looks like they're going to run their Hail Mary play right now. Armstrong didn't get it all the way to the end zone. Jump ball batted down by JT Bertrand, and that'll be the end of the half. Looked like the ball slipped a little bit out of Armstrong's hand as he wound up to fire it. They will get the ball first in the second half. Brandon Armstrong and the Wolfpack. As Molly McGrath reported, halftime is going to be about five minutes shorter than usual. It'll be 15 minutes after the hour and 45 minute weather delay earlier. Notre Dame 17 7 at the half, the State Farm halftime report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome to the State Farm Halftime Report. Hour and 40 minute delay dealing with the lightning, but uh, the Wolfpack do find the end zone. Brennan Armstrong trying to do everything he can to help this offense. The defense having some trouble slowing down Notre Dame's O. Right now they trail by 10 at the break. This halftime report is presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This halftime report is presented by State Farm. 
Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome back to ESPN's Afternoon College Football on ABC presented by Gillette Labs. This is the ACC on ESPN Notre Dame for the past decade playing an average of five games a year against ACC opponents and leading this one against NC State 17 to 7 as we head for the second half. We are live if you're just joining us. We had an hour and 45 minute weather delay in the opening seconds of the second quarter. Notre Dame's kickoff is a touchback from Spencer Schrader a moment ago Molly with Marcus Freeman coach some strategic timeouts at the end of the half to give your team another possession and a chance to score how crucial was that touchdown drive going into the locker room anytime anytime we can give our offense the, the ball with time on the clock before half I don't care how much time it is we're going to try to do that and save as much time as we can and so that was the uh, intent of calling those timeouts right before um, that last drive and uh, they went down and they executed again. How do you continue to bottle up Brennan Armstrong in the second half? Well, we have to continue to, to keep our lanes, but we cannot be passive. Like, we cannot play spy. We have to be aggressive on him, uh, but understand the rush lanes that we have. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. On the first play of the second half, it's a run for Keon Lassane, wide receiver, ahead for three. And Marcus Freeman deserves credit. His offense wasn't exactly clicking on all cylinders in that first half, but he used the timeouts. And that extra time paid off in the last touchdown of the half. Whistle stopped the play. Offside. Defense number 56. Five yard penalty. Second down. Eighth penalty already against Notre Dame. Sean McDonough, Greg McElroy, three hours and 25 minutes to play that first <laughs> half. We're going to be here for a while. And obviously, if NC State is going to come back and win the game, they need to figure out the offense. Yeah, they had a nice drive there at the end of the half. Kind of seized momentum before they gave up another big play defensively, which turned into points for the Irish. But they found something with their scramble drill. Now the passing game has to continue to stay alive. And the pressure right on his face from Javante Jean-Baptiste. Armstrong threw it into the ground. Their one touchdown drive was aided by three Notre Dame defensive penalties. 62 yards on the touchdown drive, 60 on the other seven combined. It's really similar, Greg, on the other side for Notre Dame. They had an 80 yard touchdown run by Estimate. They had a 65 yard pass play that set up the last touchdown. That's 145. They had 118 on their other 34 plays for three and a half per play. Delbert Mims the ball carry in short yardage and it looks like he just did get to the 35 yard line for the first down John Baptiste another tackle what's been difficult so far for NC State they haven't really been able to consistently run the football between the tackles they weren't able to do that last week as well still trying to figure out the offensive line had some struggles at times throughout the course of this game but they got to find a way to take some of the pressure off Brennan Armstrong. Right up the middle, untouched. Leah foul. Armstrong got it off. It hit one of his offensive linemen. Looked like they were trying to set up a screen, but Leah foul had such quick pressure that he blew up the play. Yeah, he was in there immediately and timing it out, obviously, with the screen. There's nobody there to pick, to, to pick him up. He's got to continue to retreat, and just a good job there. Sometimes the defense wins, and Brennan Armstrong doesn't make a bad play worse. He throws it in the ground to set up second and ten. There's a veteran defense, Leah Fowler, grad student. Ten of the 11 starters on defense are seniors or graduate students. Armstrong, a slant on target. Good hands catch by Kevin Concepcion, better known as KC. Nine yard gain. They're a yard short of the first down. And in comes big number 34, Delbert Mims again. He's their short yard specialist. You would imagine that he's going to get a good opportunity to pick up another third and short right here. There's Al Golden, defensive coordinator. They're in their second year in his system. And much more comfortable collectively, as you might expect in year two. Mims is great predicted, picks up the first down. Al Golden told us a great story yesterday. We mentioned all the veterans on the defense, seniors, grad students. So when I first got there, uh, the head coach Freeman said, you know, check on your guys, make sure everybody's doing the right thing, because it was in the offseason, <laughs> going to class. 
said I called three or four of them and finally Jack Kaiser said you know coach you realize that most of us are trying to get our MBAs. we're going to class <laughs> you don't have to worry about us we've been so impressed working with these Notre Dame athletes Houston the ball carry all golden last four years in the NFL as an assistant coach and we asked him you know, did you want to come back to college he said uh, not necessarily but I didn't come back to college I came to Notre Dame right said it probably wouldn't have been the case if it was anywhere else second and nine Leofau came from the corner this time and there's a nice catch along the sideline Julian Gray sophomore from Charlotte and another first down on an 11 yard pickup and you see the corner blitz on the left hand side you saw the corner hold up just a minute because he saw quickly that Brennan Armstrong was ready to pull the trigger and how about Gray toe tapping the sideline on what was a throw that was to the outside shoulder and moving across the line and it's going to be another penalty this one on D.J. Brown or maybe he was drawn off yes he was. That's the indication from the line All judge. Tion Lassane, the wide receiver. And that's just the most frustrating type of penalty that you can have as an offense. The offensive coordinators pull their hair out for that. You have third and manageable. You're just desperate to keep it third and one piece of cake down distance for the offense. Then you have a receiver of all people jump off sides outside. Just so infuriating. They we were so pleased with the fact they had only one penalty in the opener at UConn. Four today. Armstrong, a clean pocket, threw it into traffic and lucky to get away with that. Threw it into double coverage. Trying to jam it in to Kevin Concepcion, Ramon Henderson, the primary defender. Yet another senior in that secondary. Just amazing coverage. You look at the shallow cross, it's covered in man to man. They have the end breaker, which, if you would have thrown it immediately, would have potentially happened to put the safety breaks on it. And looks like NC State's going to keep their offense on the field. I'm surprised, given how much they've struggled. Maybe they don't intend to snap it. They might be trying to get Notre Dame to jump again. And now a timeout by NC State. I mean, punt the ball. If you haven't done anything. You think your defense is terrific. You just cost yourself a timeout with all that. So after the NC State timeout, Dave Doran has the punter on the field now. Caden Noonkester. We'll put a mark on that if they need a timeout at the end of the game. They just wasted one. Already the sixth punt of the day for Noonkester. Redshirt sophomore. The sun out brightly now here at Carter Finley Stadium. On a wild weather day earlier. Lots of thunder and lightning and some torrential rain. Fair catch signaled and made by Tyree. You wonder if the sun might have been an issue for him with it shining brightly off the gold helmet. 35 yard punt. We mentioned 60 year quarterbacks on each team, each in his first year at his current school, Sam Hartman. The ACC record 110 career passing touchdowns at Wake Forest and only Philip Rivers the NC State legend is thrown for more passing yards than his 12,900 and change and Brandon Armstrong the all time leading passer in yards and touchdowns at Virginia. Neither one has had a particularly big day throwing the ball today. Estime. There's an 80 yard touchdown run in the first play after the hour and 45 minute weather delay. Nothing there. Peyton Wilson in on the tackle. Estimate up to 98 yards. He had 116 last week against Tennessee State. Averaged 105 and a half through the first two games. Jeremiah Love in the game now. And it's Jadarian Price. 
Out across the 15, tripped up at the 19. Shaheem Battle stopped it after a three yard gain. That was a great tackle there in the open field because if he didn't make that play, that could have been out the game. Well, it seems as the weather gets better, more and more people have come back into the stadium. <laughs> They told him if you keep your ticket, we'll let you back in. The play resumed. It was less than half full, but it's well more than that now. Hartman on third down. Has his man. And a diving catch made by Tobias Merriweather. There is a flag down along the near numbers. And the preliminary indication is offensive pass interference. Pass interference to the goal, third down. Now offenses would call this a rub, but defenses would call this a pick. You see the freshman, Jaden Greathouse, going out to the outside to try to create a little extra room. Collision with Aiden White. And that's kind of a freshman mistake. You can have natural picks within the plan, but the receiver needs to continue on with his route. We always used to say, Sean, be an actor, not a tractor. Right there, very much a tractor as he collided with the defender. Well, he can stand in front without bumping. I mean, it didn't look like much, but Matt Austin, our referee, nodding his head. Estime on a screen. That took down a first down. And now they're going to have to punt after their ninth penalty for 68 yards. Another tackle by Peyton Wilson. Speaking of Matt Austin, congratulations to our great friend. During the weather delay, <laughs> his daughter-in-law, hello, Matt, I know how happy and proud you are. Daughter-in-law Haley, wife of his son Jake, gave birth to James Matthew Austin, Matt and Julie's second grandchild. So congratulations to all. God bless. Let's say one thing, James Matthew is very lucky to have Matt as his grandfather. Jalen Coit, the fair catch. Timeout. Congrats, Matt. ABC College Football, presented by Gillette Labs, is brought to you by Ram Trucks, America's best light-duty pickup for new vehicle quality. The last time our ESPN and ABC cameras were here at Carter Finley Stadium in February, the Carolina Hurricanes hosted the NHL Stadium Series against the Washington Capitals. What a great scene it was. There's their arena, the Canes Arena, just across the parking lot. Carolina won four to one. And just electric atmosphere. They have great fans. The Caniacs, according to the NHL, the most merchandise ever sold for a Stadium Series game. Steve Mayer and the NHL people know how to do it. The big events. And the Canes did a great job as well. On first down, Armstrong completed it. And the ball came loose from Juice Vereen for a minute. He was able to get it back. Ramon Henderson there for the Irish, an 11 yard gain for North Carolina State. Foul, roughing the passer. Defense for the 47. My goodness. Automatic. 10 penalties on Notre Dame. Four on the defense, three of them on the one touchdown drive, and that was Jason Onye with the high hit. And that is a point of emphasis. If you collide with the quarterback in the passing posture, on the helmet, on the face mask, it's going to get called. But man, as a quarterback, even as a quarterback, it's hard for me to understand that ruling. Armstrong trying to set up a screen incomplete to Terrell Timmons. Onye is trying to make a play on the ball. He's trying to tip the pass and. I know you collide, but my goodness, I mean, it's not egregious. Just have a hard time justifying a call like that, even though You're technically, quarterback. by the letter of the law, it's correct. It's just one that I struggle with so when it if, comes to that. So if you were playing today and you were a quarterback, you wouldn't want that to be called a penalty? <laughs> you definitely <laughs> want it, but I think Brennan but Armstrong might be. even agree. Armstrong has a man open, high throw. He's had some drop, but that wasn't a very good throw. Intended for Vereen with Xavier Watson coverage. He taps his chest there too. Brennan Armstrong, the second to go, say, hey, that's my bad. 
tapped it. That's what a leader does. That's what a veteran does. Hey, man, good route. You were open. I got to hit you. Unfortunately, my sight's just a little bit high right there. The big third and ten. Probably not in field goal range, but they're close. Like Schrader, Narvison has a big leg. Pressure brought by Al Golden. Man open in the flat. They need the 29. He didn't get there. KC Concepcion about two yards short. It'll be fourth and two. Armstrong wants to go for it. Field goal makes it a one goal game. It would be a 48 yarder. The offense still on the field. And now here comes the kicker. And again, I agree with this decision, Greg. You know, it's a low scoring, close game. You're down two scores. Get the points, get back within a score. You got a quarter and a half to go. Yeah, in a game like this, points are so valuable. And your defense played pretty well with the exception of two plays. So I, I agree. Take the points when you get within field goal range. 49 yard try. He has plenty of leg for that. And it is right down the middle. Raiden Narvison. From beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona, and Desert Mountain High School. Grad transfer from Western Kentucky. Perfect snap. Mash laces, laces out Dan, and he drives it through the uprights. Excellent kick as Dave Dorn looks on. Good decision, I believe, to take the three. From Narvison. He'll turn 24 later this month. Kick off your week one NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. with the countdown crew on ESPN and the app. Tennis legend, New York native John McEnroe sits down with Aaron Rodgers to talk about playing in New York. Who knew Aaron Rodgers was playing for the Jets? <laughs> He'll be on. <laughs> if you don't, you've been somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> certainly not watching ESPN. They'll be hosting the Buffalo Bills as the 54th season of Monday Night Football kicks off on Monday on ESPN. Deportes and plus 9-0 in his last nine Monday night games. Aaron Rodgers, of course, this is first as a Jet after all those great years with the Green Bay Packers. Coverage begins at 6. Scott Van Pelt and the new Monday Night Countdown crew. Price is going to run it out of the end zone. And he made it exactly to the 25. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, for our audience, this game, Texas A&M, Miami over on ESPN News right now. And it's the Aggie special team, Jade Walker breaking through. Big break for a team on the road trying to create something early on. And that would set up an easy score for the Aggies. Connor Wegman going in. So Bobby Petrino, Jimbo Fisher feeling good right now. Again, this game on ESPN News, AM up 7-0. Back to you. What do you think of Texas AM this year? Step forward now with Bobby Petrino as the offensive coordinator. They have a lot of talent on the perimeter. That wide receiver core is good as anybody in college football outside of Ohio State. That's always the caveat, right? 7.20 to go, third quarter. Sam Hartman on first down. Down the seam on target. First down to the Wolfpack 48. Holden stays the tight end with a 29-yard completion. Man, just a great throw here by Sam Hartman. You see the switch released by the two wide receivers as they crisscross and change spots. And a perfect throw to Holden Stays, who I think has a very bright future as a pass catching weapon as he continues to grow and mature. It's his third career catch, sophomore from Atlanta. Here's Estime. He has eight more. They're very quickly to the Wolfpack 40. Here's Molly. Well, on the sideline, defensive coordinator Tony Gibson called his entire defense together and addressed mistakes, saying, We can't be running all over the place. Get lined up and play. Defensive end Davin Van was emotional and he said, It's been a long day. You guys look like you want to go home. If so, go home. I don't want you here. He told them the rest of this game and their focus is all mental. Well, a couple of big busts. Big plays given up by this Wolfpack defense. Over 100 yards again. Estime for the second time in three games this season. Hartman throws it out wide. Here stays again. He stays in bounds. 
Jones and goes to the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. And just play action right up the middle, and you'll see Holden Stays just slip right out into the flat. Just a little spider two Y banana. Perfect throw to the outside, but how about Stays? Staying in bounds, tight roping the sideline and showing the Jets off as he finds pay dirt. What a great answer for the Fighting Irish. The second touchdown of the season. The end of his career. He had a touchdown catch last week against Tennessee State just before the half. Had one catch all of last season. It did not go for a touchdown. Extra point good by Spencer Schrader. Just three plays to go 76 yards. It took a minute and 37 seconds. And just like that, Notre Dame has opened up a 14 point lead. Holden stays the 40 yard touchdown, the catch and run. And it's a 24 to 10 lead for Notre Dame. And that replaced Michael Mayer, All American tight end, their all time leader in receptions by a tight end. Second round pick with the Raiders. Schrader's kickoff is another touchback. And the defense for the Irish has held NC State to 10 points. Yeah, it's very clear the point of emphasis take away Brennan Armstrong's space as he tries to create. So Notre Dame has employed a spy. This time it's J.D. Bertrand. He's standing there, eyes in the backfield, knows exactly where the quarterback is. This is one of the few times where Brennan Armstrong actually had room. Maris Leopold gets stuck a little bit too far inside, can't close quick enough. And Brennan Armstrong throws a strike for the only touchdown of the game for the pack. So they're going to continue to employ that and close quickly when Brennan Armstrong moves off the spot. Lassane took the handoff, and the wide receiver got almost nine. The touchdown by NC State, the only one given up by Notre Dame this season. And the defense will probably be kicking itself since they helped the Wolfpack on that drive with three defensive penalties. Last time Notre Dame opened a season without giving up a touchdown in their first two games was 1975. Against Boston College and Purdue. Armstrong, good fake, has the corner. And Scampers out of bounds with a first down of the NC State 41. It really hasn't been a whole lot of designed quarterback runs from Robert Benai. That's not really Brennan Armstrong's strength. He's really best as a runner when he's in a scramble situation where he doesn't like anything downfield and he takes off. Design runs. That might be something they need to utilize moving forward with how quickly Notre Dame's closing. Launches it up in a single coverage jump ball, and it is caught! Keon Lassane with Cam Hart in coverage. And the Wolf Pack to the Notre Dame 21. Just a terrific route. Pretty good coverage there, as you can see from Cam Hart. Both eyes on the ball, and Brendan Armstrong drops it in the bucket perfectly. That's uncoverable, and what a heck of a catch downfield. 38 yards, longest gain from scrimmage of this season. Bob Welch is the replay official. Hussein, a returning player. Just great effort. As you can see, ball can touch the ground. That can happen. It's allowed, but you have to maintain possession all the way through the catch. Does look right there. Ball moves a little bit, but is that arm underneath it as it moves? Based on the initial look, doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot in that replay review to potentially overturn. Well, let's bring in Matt Austin. What do you think, Gramps? <laughs> Greg, I agree with everything you just said. I think he had enough control of this uh, ball. I do think he had his arms underneath it. You did see it move a little bit, but I don't see it on the ground. I think this is a great play. I think this should be a catch, and I would expect it to stand. Hussein, you know, we asked Robert and I after they didn't have a play of 20 yards or more in week one against UConn, do you have guys who can do that? And he said, yes, after we have several. Review, the ruling on the field stands. 
And he mentioned Lassane is one who had 31 catches last year, senior from Lumberton, North Carolina. Just a beautiful, beautiful catch. Great effort. And my goodness, I mean, that throw from Brennan Armstrong, that thing almost brought the clouds back. That thing made it rain, just dropping it right in the bucket way downfield. Pressure from Notre Dame. Armstrong over the head of Juice Farine. Another big target at 6'4, 214 pounds. As you can see, Juice Farine has been very reliable today. Would have been a tough catch for sure, but gets both hands on it. He just didn't quite time his jump perfectly, and just a near miss there for the pack. Second and ten down by two touchdowns might be four down territory here. Jordan Houston slides ahead for three. Jordan Botello made the tackle. Donovan Heinisch also in on the play. And an important play call here for Robert and I. They're just four out of 12 on third down. An average of seven yards to go. That's hard to convert. See if Al Golden brings the heat again. He does. Armstrong fires, caught, first down. And down to the one goes Juice Farine. D.J. Brown the tackle, 17 yards, first and goal at the one. And it's a great job here. He throws into the pressure. The pressure's coming off the left-hand side. Armstrong sees it, looks right at it. As a result, the man that's responsible for Juice Farine and man coverage is playing at about 12, 13 yards deep, trying to disguise that pressure. And it's a great catch by Vereen and a nice conversion for the pack. He's their leading receiver today. Four catches for 65. Armstrong. Crowd thinks it's a touchdown. The officials now signal touchdown NC State. Take a look at the progressive pylon. Just a little QB sweep. I mean, Notre Dame saw this two weeks ago with Navy. They don't have a quarterback that can power his way into the end zone like Checking Brennan to Armstrong. See if it was a touchdown. Did the ball break the plane before his knee was down, and the play stands is called. Well, Armstrong already three rushing touchdowns on the season. That's the first touchdown allowed on the ground by Notre Dame this year. Braden Narvison just did sneak that in. He's never missed a PAT in college. He's 163 out of 163. And kind of reminiscent of the opener against UConn, Greg. Armstrong having to do a lot of it himself. He is, but really in the last couple drives, it was a wide receiver group that had been plagued there in the first half with a bunch of drops, guys not being able to create real separation. But now they've settled in a little bit. They're making the contested catch. They're being able to get behind the defense. They're elevating on throws that are off target, and they're making their quarterback look a whole heck of a lot better here in the second half. So they've really picked it up in the passing game. Armstrong arrived in January like Sam Hartman immediately made an impression on his teammates and was voted a captain. A lot of people thought it was just a foregone conclusion when Armstrong wanted to transfer that he come here because Robert and I was here. They had so much success two years ago at UVA. But both Armstrong and I said that wasn't the case. Brent and I wanted to look around. He thought long and hard about Wisconsin, about Oklahoma State. And Robert and I said, yeah, we had to re-recruit him. Brennan Armstrong joked to an eye, said, I'm glad I'm the one who's making you a little bit uncomfortable right now. It's <laughs> been the other way around in the past. Kickoff is a touchback. 
Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, AT&T 5G keeping fans connected as we take a look at our multi-view, which is showcasing a bunch of great games, events across all our networks, and a U.S. Open Women's Final featuring Sabalenka and Coco Golf currently going on ESPN. Top 25 matchup over on ESPN2. Maybe the biggest game at Tulane in decades as they host Old Miss. And that game right now, Tulane up 10 to 7. Texas A&M, that game scheduled to be on ABC. They're up 7-0 over Miami. Back to you. All kinds of action all over the place. We're late in the third quarter here. Game interrupted for an hour and 45 by a weather delay. Jeremiah Love on first down, a yard and a half for Notre Dame. Like Armstrong, Greg, Sam Hartman blended in very quickly. He said, you know, he didn't go in trying too hard, just wanted to be a teammate. Everybody we talked to yesterday said everybody was immediately impressed. Yeah, and just being around him yesterday, visiting with him, he's got this natural gravitational pull that he just is, he plays so confidently and so under control that you just can't help but follow him. Just very impressed with the way he approaches the game. Looking down the field, running out of time, lost the football, and NC State has it inside the 20. Second time they've knocked it away from Hartman. Early in the game, they recovered his fumble. This one is the first Irish turnover of the game. And this is just great coverage downfield. There's really nothing there. You see Hartman survive the first hit, but the ball comes out as he's hit for the second time. Doesn't see the defender coming from the backside. Poor ball security there from Hartman. You got to keep two hands on the ball when you're under duress. But NC State knocks it out, and they make a huge play to give their offense great field position. Brandon Cleveland, the backup nose, knocked it out. Noah Potter, also a backup, transferred from Cincinnati in January, recovered it. Officially a sack, the fourth. So they've sacked Sam 17 times in four games. To the end zone, incomplete. Looking for Concepcion. Not the biggest target if you're going to throw that pass. He's just 5'11", and that might be a little generous. Yeah, riding the wave of the momentum and trying to go for the jugular here. It's a pretty good throw as Concepcion tries to go up and time it. Would like it just maybe a touch deeper. Instead, he can't quite reel it in. It's well covered again by Thomas Harper. I think he's had a nice game so far for Notre Dame. Concepcion comes off. Reaching for his stomach. Two minutes to go, third quarter. NC State down 14 a moment ago. Will be penalized for a false start. False start. Offense. Second down. Apparently Adam Savoy's uh, Safwa's microphone rusted a little bit during the weather problems. So they're back at the 22, second and 15. Armstrong 15 for 33 for 173, a touchdown and an interception. There's the first turnover of the season for NC State in game two. They rush five. He lofts it up in a single coverage again. And it's incomplete out of bounds. Looking for Julian Gray. Jalen Sneed put pressure on the passer. And he's been an emerging force here in the early season. Sophomore from Hilton Head. That's more pressure being called by Al Golden. Trying to dictate a little bit and force the ball out of Brendan Armstrong's hands really quickly. Now here in a third and long situation, with a kicker that's clearly got a big leg probably want to play coverage here don't want to pressure him and allow a one on one over the top. They do rush just the three. Defending the line the game. Armstrong dancing. In trouble. And a nifty run got nowhere near the first down marker. Eventually it was Jean-Baptiste and Kaiser 
who took him to the ground. A six yard gain. He covered a lot more ground than that. My goodness, he held it forever. You know you have a three man rush, so you know you have time. You can be patient. Buys it. Nothing there to the left. Tries to get back to the right. Reverses course again and gets back to the left. But right here, a huge missed opportunity with a wide open wide receiver there in the corner of the end zone. But Armstrong just doesn't see it, doesn't have it in the position ready to throw. And as a result, he's dropped. 34 yard try now for Narvison, and he hooked it. Wide left, not close. Where the snap and hold look fine. Veteran snapper Joe Shimko. 51 straight games as a snapper for them. He's never had a bad snap. The contact looked good as well. Nice, solid hit by Narvison. Just pulled it a little bit to his left. And a big change of events and a great job defensively there by Notre Dame. Sudden change opportunity. All the momentum on the side of the pack. And they're able to get off the field there in the red zone, allowing zero points in the process. Last three years at Western Kentucky, Narvison made 80% of his field goals. That was a short one for him. Three-man rush, NC State. And the ball incomplete, reaching back for it. In the seam was Mitchell Evans, couldn't take it in. Some balls on both sides today that should have and could have been caught that haven't been. Here, if I'm Jared Parker, I want to get Chris Tyree back involved. Something quick, get it out of Hartman's hands, see what your guy can do with it. Yes, DeMay trying to drag people with him, and finally wrestled to the ground by Caden Fordham, sophomore from Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, son of Tom, who was a terrific lineman at Florida State on offense, played in the NFL for a decade. Gain of eight. Here's third down and two in the final 30 seconds of the third quarter. Big personnel coming on the field for the Irish. Looks like three tight ends. Mitchell Evans, Holden Stays, and David Sherwood all there in kind of like a goal line wishbone alignment. Just two out of nine on third down. And they stuff the run. Estime driven back by a host of NC State defenders. With Notre Dame leading 24 to 17. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Tonight after Southern Miss and Florida State on the ACC Network, the Huddle Crew will have a complete wrap up of that game, the whole day in the ACC, and all the rest of the college football action of the day over on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Fourth down for Notre Dame, fourth and four on the first play of the fourth quarter. And Bryce McPherson is on the punt. NC State went after it, short. Wobbly kick. Jalen Coit moves away from it. And the Wolfpack will start at the 23. 51 yard punt. We'll be back in eight seconds after a word from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks built to serve. That's our kind of commercial right there. Brevity. Always appreciated. <laughs> So NC State drove down to field goal range in the last possession. Narvison missed the 34 yarder. They start from the 23. Play fake by Brennan Armstrong. And good coverage by Cam Hart. Made a quick move on Terrell Timmons. Hart's a grad student. A captain this year is voted by his teammates. Along with Bertrand, Alt, and Hartman. Been very impressed really all game long with Notre Dame secondary coming into this game a little untested naturally 
and against their last two opponents. But even the throws that have been completed have been contested, man. That secondary is really doing a good job. Jordan Houston with a flag thrown. Four yard pickup taken down by Joshua Burnham and Jack Kaiser. Burnham, a young player, earning more and more Holy playing time. Offense, number 65. Ten yard penalty, second down. Jacarius Peak, a backup tackle in the game, red shirt Correction. freshman. The foul was on 56. And it wasn't his fault. We take it back, Jacarius. Lyndon Cooper called for the hold. How about this? A little little showtime Magic Johnson right here. Watch the umpire to the left. Throws it behind his back. Mm, style points. I like that. A little swag on the on the flag call. And an Ellison. The pass incomplete. Xavier Watts came over the top. The crowd won the penalty. It's a couple of times like Concepcion in a cut. Lost his footing, it appeared. Yeah, and Armstrong had this early. I mean, Concepcion is wide open for a while. It just took him forever to get there. And as a result, Xavier Watts could close quickly. That ball gets out of Brennan Armstrong's hands really quick. You got Concepcion with a lot of space one on one with the safety. He kind of went down because he had to reach back for it. Three for his last 11 for Armstrong. Gets another blitz, and that one is intercepted. Off the hands of Concepcion and picked off by Ramon Henderson. Or by Xavier Watts. The senior from Omaha, his first career interception. And that time, Brendan Armstrong got it out really quick to the point where it looked like for a second he was going to squeeze it in there. It gets tipped up, and you see the reaction from Concepcion. And how about the concentration from Xavier Watts being able to go down, pick it up off his shoelaces, and make an incredible play as you see the look of despair on the eyes of both Concepcion, the freshman, and the veteran quarterback. Well, it should have been caught. They love Concepcion. Robert and I compare him to Wes Welker, who he uh, was on the coaching staff for at Texas Tech back in the day. Jeremiah loved the ball carrier. That really took the wind out of the crowd here. Now Notre Dame already in field position to kick a field goal at the very least and make it a two score game again. That's a huge defensive sequence here for the Wolfpack. They have to eliminate the bleeding given the way their defense has or their offense has struggled to put things together today. And you almost have to hold them to a field goal and the touchdown clearly breaks this thing wide open. Darian Price, the running back. Sam Harvin faked it to him, dumped it off. Another good run after the catch by Holden Stays. There were no targets of the tight ends in the Navy game. That was a concern for some Notre Dame fans. Jared Parker said to us yesterday, don't worry, these guys are capable of being involved in the passing game, and they have been today, particularly Stays. Yeah, he's excellent. Mitchell Evans, a bit of a work in progress as a pass catcher, but a tremendous athlete. And they all are really anxious about the return down the road of Eli Raridan, who's an excellent, long, six foot seven target with great athleticism. Still working his way back from injury. Here's Love. Taken down by Peyton Wilson. We mentioned it earlier 16 straight games without allowing more than 30 points this NC State defense longest active streak in FBS football and that is in jeopardy now Peyton Wilson in the defense we mentioned Wake Forest the last to do it in 2021 up in Winston Salem 45 42 win over NC State behind Sam Hartman Ron Payne near the 10 yard line. That was the only win for Sam Hartman in his three games against the Wolf Pack while playing for the Demon Deacons. And right here, third and short. The last time you had a short yardage situation, NC State completely sold out against the run. I go back to the play that Holden Stays scored on earlier. Fake it up inside, slip Holden Stays out to the flat. 
and maybe you can get a walk in because of the sellout that Wolfpack likely to have against the run. Estimate back in a running back. They fake it to him. They flip it up for David Sherwood. Touchdown, Notre Dame. The tight ends fully engaged today for the Irish. Davis Sherwood. And that was the exact same play that Holden Stays scored on earlier. It's Spider two, why banana? This time, instead of Stays, it's Sherwood. He slips out into the flat, exactly what we thought they might do right there. And he finds pay dirt in the front corner of the end zone. Just a great play there by Sherwood and an excellent call from Jared Parker. 119th career touchdown pass now in the top 10 all time. Sam Hartman. Schrader's extra point is good. Davis Sherwood the touchdown. Junior from here in North Carolina from Greensboro. Just his second career catch in 28 games in the first one was last week. Thirty-one seventeen, Notre Dame, eleven and a half to go. Three touchdown passes today for Sam Harbin, giving him 119 for his career. Nine of those at Notre Dame. He's now tied for tenth all time. And touchdown passes in FBS history, a lot of seasons still to go. Julian Gray, the return man, spun down across the 25. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, let's go to South Florida. Miami down to number 23, Texas A&M. Tyler Van Dyke, six of seven, is only incomplete as a drop here. This is a great shot by Restrepo to Restrepo. The release on the seam route, beautiful job, and then the timing by Van Dyke to rip it to him, 48 yards. And they do score in the red zone, something they didn't do last year against the Ag. Yeah, I love the play fake. Holds the linebacker, the defensive end is held. Easy to toss outside for the touchdown. And 7 A&M over on ESPN News, Sean. All right, we apologize to them for that. Offense. False start Number penalty to start this possession. First down. Anthony Belton. That game is on news because uh, this one obviously is well out of its intended window because of an hour and 45 minute weather delay that began at 1250. We had 56,919 here. They were rollicking early. It is a sellout. Many of them departed after the weather delay. Armstrong checks it down. Uh, Stumbling catch made by Terrell Timmons. And there's another flag down far sideline by the numbers. That linesman Josiah Has Ford. Offense number six. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Trent Penix. Seems surprised to be flagged. Another sixth year player who already has a degree in criminology. Trying to get a rub on a little underneath mesh. And they called one earlier on Notre Dame, so clearly the officials making that a point of emphasis in this game. Back to back penalties, first and 25, over the middle, and intercepted again. DJ Brown picked it off. Another grad student, it's his fourth career interception. Just another excellent break on the ball from the Notre Dame secondary. Right here, DJ Brown dropping back, but keeping his eyes on Timmons, who's about to work across the middle of the field. He jumps in front, doesn't catch it initially, but stays with it, drags it in. And this secondary, man, they have come to play today. He's the quarterback of that secondary, Brown. Not a great day for Brennan Armstrong. Three interceptions now. 15 out of 38. 
For 173 yards, he has thrown his first touchdown pass as an NC State player. Hartman throws it away. Looks like some confusion on the play action fake with Estime. Talked about how these quarterbacks won their teammates over early. Sam Hartman, as we mentioned earlier, said NIL was a reason he elected to stay in college. He has a deal with Under Armour, who's also the apparel provider for Notre Dame. Before they left for Dublin, Marcus Freeman let him talk to the team after practice. He said he had arranged with Under Armour for them to get these slip on shoes <laughs> that they could wear on the long flight. Love that. And then another one of his NIL deals is uh, headphones. And he arranged for every player on the team at another practice to get a pair of headphones for the trip to Ireland. And one of the Notre Dame players said as he walked away, every day is Christmas with Sam Hart. <laughs> well, I could imagine so. And it's really, I mean, he's an indicator, and there'll be plenty more in the future, too, of guys that, hey, you go to the NFL, be a fifth round pick, or come back and play for a championship. Estime breaks free and scores. Seven yard touchdown run. He's so powerfully built. Listed at 5'11 and a half, 227 yeah. pounds. He's just so difficult to bring down, and you referenced it. With that much weight behind you at 230, especially early in the season, it's so difficult there in the third and fourth quarter. He just keeps pounding and pounding and pounding away. And ultimately, there, he breaks through to score another touchdown. Quickly into the end zone after the turnover. Estime up to 128 yards rushing. Six shy of his career high set against North Carolina last week. He's averaged 9.8 yards per rush. That 80 yarder certainly helped that average. ABC College Football is presented by Gillette Labs the next generation of shaving. As usual, some great looks today from the progressive pylon camera. We salute our crew. A lot of difficult conditions here the last couple of days and setting up with some inclement weather here yesterday and then the torrential rains, thunderstorms this morning, the long delay. Terrific. ESPN and ABC crew led by our producer Scott Johnson and our director Phil Dean. I switched their titles. It's been a long day. <laughs> I only know their titles when we're still in our window. Once it got past 3.30, I have checked out. I think she's still Molly McGrath. Hello, Molly. Am I the play-by-play -play now? Yes, yes. You, you could yes, be. You are if I keep doing that, you will be. Well, Sean, uh, Audric <laughs> Estime had his second touchdown run of the day, and uh, he predicted that 80-yard touchdown run in the beginning of the game in the second quarter. He predicted that on Tuesday. He told me he writes his goals in a notebook over and over again and speaks them into existence. And this week, he wrote in his notebook, break a long run, 60 yards minimum, telling us he predicted that then-career-high 50-yard run from last week's game and wrote that goal in a notebook, but felt like he cut the run short and he could have kept going. Clairvoyant. <laughs> Ask him for some lottery numbers the next time you chat with him. Just wonder, is he going to be really disappointed next week if he doesn't break a 90-yarder? Not I mean, leaving much room to yeah. improve. <laughs> I'm about to say, he's, by week four, they're going to have to start in their own end zone for him to be satisfied with, with his long-run goal. From New Jersey, Lost his mom, who was a single mom, birth at age 10 to sickle cell disease, raised by an aunt and uncle, did a terrific job with Audric and his brother. New Jersey High School Player of the Year. Short gain for Armstrong, originally committed to Michigan State, but then changed his commitment to his dream school, Notre Dame. And for a while, Stuck behind some other good running backs. There was some speculation he might transfer, but he said he never thought about that. Loves Notre Dame. Very comfortable in the situation he's in. He's, he looks more agile side to side, too, as opposed to just going straight downhill, man. He's really developing into an excellent back. Armstrong dumps it over the middle. Heading in the wrong direction for a moment. Lassane. 
And now he has the first down and much more out to the 45 yard line where he was run down by Howard Cross the third. 15 yard gain. Obviously this one. Can't quite say it's over just yet. It feels close to that, but a touchdown here does keep it a little interesting, and you gotta obviously start being very mindful of the clock and operating with a tempo. Armstrong, far sideline, incomplete. Intended for Lassane. Good coverage by Jaden Mickey, a backup corner. Well, they have. Depth, you know, second year in Al Golden system. And not only they have a veteran core of returning starters, but the, they're starting to develop some nice backups as well. And some really talented freshmen that maybe the, the world doesn't know about yet, but soon they will. Jalen Sneed, I think, has a chance to be an excellent player. A couple really good, talented corners. And Joshua Burnham, who's already making an impact. Armstrong dances across midfield. They'll give him the 50 yard line, five yard gain. Junior Tui Alamaka in on the stop. Some backups in. Well, Marcus Freeman said in the offseason, a big emphasis was developing depth. Here's Mims. Boy, on third down and almost six, that's an interesting call. You give it to your short yardage guy. The crowd boos that call from Robert and I. They're going to go for it on fourth down. That was one of the benefits, Greg, for this defense. The first two games, blowout wins, a chance to play a lot of different people on both sides of the ball. And, and develop a ton of depth, too. I mean, not just defensively, but you referenced it, both sides of the ball. Offensively, Steve Angeli getting an entire half last week. Very, very important. Some young offensive linemen that have found their way into the game. And really true important. freshman corner in there right now. Christian Gray was at the bottom of your screen, number 29. They have to have it, and that's going to depend on the spot, as it always does. But I believe Concepcion is short. And again, if the ball's on target, the receiver short of the line to gain. First down, Notre Dame. Midway through the fourth quarter. And that kind of a day for Armstrong and his receiving core. Timeout. Tonight at 7 on ESPN, the marquee matchup of the weekend. Number 11, Texas. Number 3, Alabama. Pat McAfee and his crew with an alternate broadcast on ESPN 2. I have a feeling that man will be watching that game. Boop Corrigan, the athletic director at NC State, is the chairman of the college football playoff selection committee. One of the good guys in college football. Roderick Estime powers across midfield. How do you like your alma mater's chances of getting back into the college football playoff this well, year? We're going to learn a lot tonight, and not just about Alabama, but about Texas, too. I mean, long we've discussed is Texas back. Well, the roster appears ready. They have tremendous wide receiver play. Defensively in the front seven, they've grown by leaps and bounds the last couple of years. A few impact transfers that will fill in some voids where they didn't have depth in previous years and then it really I think is going to come down a lot to the quarterback play. Quinn Ewers has certainly had his ups and downs for Texas but appears based on what you've heard in the offseason has really taken a step forward as far as his development and then Jalen Milrow at Alabama tremendous athlete but can he if Texas can slow down that rushing attack can he throw it over their heads and make them pay. Darian Price carried for a Notre Dame first down 640 to go. And Notre Dame comfortably on its way to 3 0. And their 29th straight regular season win against an ACC opponent. The last time they lost to an ACC team in the regular season was 2017 against Miami. 32 and 1 in the last 33 against ACC competition. Well, 
includes 17 straight road wins against the ACC. Love squirts up the middle. Notre Dame, though, I mean, they have the makings of a team that could really shake things up. Obviously, next week, not going to really be challenged, at least you would hope, against Central Michigan. But my goodness, on September 23rd, welcoming the Buckeyes mm. to South Bend. And hey, if there's one thing we've learned, and I know it's, it's against NC State, and their wide receiver core is not quite where the Buckeyes are, but these corners and these safeties have really impressed me. That's going to be a fascinating matchup to watch, those Ohio State wide receivers against this back end for the Irish. Jabron Payne stacked up after a short game. Don't sleep on that game at Duke. That was no fluke the other night, Monday night in Durham, when they beat Clemson was the preseason favorite to win the ACC. That is a talented and very well coached Duke team. That is and I think Notre Dame's schedule and they I know a lot of people give them a hard time. I think their schedule is really difficult. Not just because I think the ACC collectively is better. I think just the variety that you face throughout the season it's always that way. I mean you got triple option you got teams that will spread you around you got quarterbacks that can create in the run game. I mean they're going to see a lot of different looks and I think it's a gauntlet for the Irish, but I think they might be able to get there. I really believe it. Hartman has a man open. And another touchdown for Holden Stays. He had two career catches prior to today. The sophomore from Atlanta, he has scored two touchdowns today. And against that fast flowing defense, the misdirection has been problematic for NC State at times today. They fake the run to the left, they boot Sam Hartman out to the right, and the defender in the back end for the Wolfpack, John Brown, kind of falls asleep at the wheel. Stays gets in behind him, and Hartman notches his fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon. Four catches, 115 yards receiving, and two touchdowns for Stays. Mm -hmm. We said we liked him. I didn't think we expected this kind of outburst. Well, the coach has said the tight ends will be involved. They've scored three touchdowns for the Irish today. Well, the three Notre Dame tight ends, Holden Stays, Davis Sherwood, Mitchell Evans, have combined for six catches, 127 yards, and three touchdowns. Two of those scores by Holden Stays with 115. Yards receiving, far and away a career high. He had one catch last year for 11 yards and one for four yards this season. That was it, of course. Much more opportunity now. And the kickoff goes out of bounds. Sam Hartman's been terrific today. This throw on the double post, his eyes are on that safety. He works him to the inside, times it beautifully. As soon as he sees that safety collapse on the inside post, he delivers the football, and then off play action, Holden stays totally selling out against the run. They slip, stays out in the flat, does a great job tightrope in the sideline and continuing on inbounds to find the end zone yet again, and then stays a little bit later, just drifting to his right. And Sam Hartman with a little strut at the end after a four touchdown performance. Kendrick Raphael takes the handoff. I think when you look at how Notre Dame's built, I mean, they are really operating at a high level. The question mark has been the wide receivers and the tight ends, the weapons. But with how they run the football, and you're going to have teams that have to respect the run. You're going to have safeties that are down around the box to stop the run game. They're going to get a lot of really favorable matchups, and they've taken advantage of it today. Armstrong on target. Porter rooks the catch. Antonio Carter had coverage. He's a transfer from Rhode Island. And he got flagged for pass interference. Carter from Orlando, Florida. Started all 11 games at safety for the Rhode Island Rams last year. He's been a nice addition. Adding some depth to that secondary. Armstrong almost picked off again. Looked like Christian Gray, the freshman, was content just to bat it down when perhaps he could have picked it off. And he really did a great job of breaking on this ball. He tried to get a couple hands out there, but 
Just couldn't quite reel it in, but still a tremendous pass breakup from the freshman. Short set. And a quick throw to Porter Rooks, the junior from Charlotte of Myers Park High School. Also produced Drake May, the North Carolina quarterback, gain of nine. Third down and one. Raphael picks up the first down. True freshman from Naples, Florida. Got five snaps in the opener at UConn. One of five true freshmen to play in that game. I think when you look at NC State, too, I know it's a demoralizing performance, but still, I mean, so much left on the schedule. This obviously won't affect where you stand in ACC play, but a lot of winnable games in the next few weeks at home. And they can still, I think, do a lot of good things this year if they can clean some things up defensively and really get the passing attack going. Donovan Heinisch, the sack. The first sack of the day seems hard to believe with as much as they've been around Armstrong. His brother Kurt was a terrific defensive lineman now in the National Football League. He starred at Notre Dame as well. Donovan Heinisch, a backup, trying to work his way to the front of their rotation up front. Armstrong has a man open near sideline, caught short of the first down. Raphael again. We're down to two and a half minutes to go, a 14 yard gain. I have to wonder, we showed Blue Corgan a minute ago, the athletic director at the NC State. It's not totally awful for him, undoubtedly, he wants the Wolfpack to win. Catching a first down for Rooks, but he is a Notre Dame grad. And congratulations to his brother Kevin, the lacrosse coach at Notre Dame on their national championship one a few months ago. Another one of the great guys, an amazing family. Their dad, Gene Corrigan. There's a seam ball down the middle and a touchdown. Dakari Collins. The transfer from Clemson with his first catch for the NC State Wolfpack, and it winds up in the end zone, a 23-yard score. It was a nice route, too, by Dakari Collins working to the inside. You see how he was able to create that immediate separation, and that was a nicely timed throw from Ben and Armstrong. There's been a few times today where he's been a little late. Hasn't really trusted the receiver. That time he throws it on time before the defender can arrive, and Dakari Collins falls forward into the end zone. Collins has been banged up a little bit, so hasn't seen much playing time in these first two games. Raiden Narvison adds the extra point. And it's 45 24 with 2.03 to go. Tell a little bit with Brendan Armstrong. There's still a little bit of a process of feeling out with the receivers, trying to still develop that chemistry. And I referenced probably been four or five occasions today where he's been just a little bit late. Had he delivered the ball just a little bit sooner, anticipated just a little bit better, it would have given his receivers a whole lot more space to be able to work with the ball in their hands. So I think they're just going to have to continue to work on that. He's going to have to continue to get comfortable and develop that rapport with some of the guys he's going to be trusting on the outside. You know, we've had a lot of lists today. Sam Harbin moving up the all-time touchdown list. Brennan Armstrong. Number one in career passing yards in the ACC all time among lefties. <laughs> there you go. You know, two minutes to go. We've been here more than five hours. You know, it's a three score game with just dumping nuggets. Onside kick. Handled well by the Irish. Xavier Watts out there. Here's Kevin Nagandi.